Ladies and gentlemen, make sure you are following us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Give us a five-star rating. It massively helps us out. Enjoy. I haven't been there in ages. Yeah, mate, so... Yeah, I mean, we shall see. Get them out early. That was like they were saying that was the loudest the Emirates has been in like years. Apparently, really, yeah. When, when Lacazette, yeah, when we scored that winner. Yeah, Barcelona's got to be up there then. Oh, that one, I was there. Oh, I really? Yeah, what I you remember. saw? I having... Yeah, I remember I was being. That I remember there. Dope. I remember taking the flags home and then school the next day, like going in school. Like, oh, where were you? Where were you sat for that one? I was sat the other goal. Oh, so all okay. the goals were scored on the other end. Oh, Wait, so no. you could, but you got, a, you yeah, got, I got like a view a of it. View. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I knew it went in the corner, but I was like, it's gone in. Yeah. I watched that back on, I think it came up on like TikTok or something. And I, I was like, I still can't believe that actually happened. Yeah. What a boy. And then we, and then we got, then we went to the camp. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Have you heard Wilshire <laughs> speaking about it? No. No. He spoke about it on um, Talksport and he was saying that um, he said that uh, like he was nervous in a tunnel, blah, blah, blah. And he said, like, there was one time, like, he slid in, won the ball off in the Esther, then ran past Busquets, and the crowd, like, went mad. And that was after up. that, he got gassed. And he said, he just, after that, it was just, like, playing free. Imagine doing that, though, winning the ball off in the Esther, and then just skewing it past Busquets. Yeah. <laughs> do you not think that? I can't I even feel, do I that like FIFA, the, man. In the moment, though, he, he probably thinks, like, oh my God, I actually am the best player in the world. <laughs> yeah. He probably yeah. does that. No, no, I agree. <laughs> he he you, probably I looks agree. at these guys and thinks, oh, they're just, he, it makes them realize they're just, just, they're just they human, they aren't they? They love me. They're just human. He was 16, just tearing up Barcelona. Do you know what I mean? That is mental. Uh, can you pronounce where he's gone now? Yeah, Denmark. Ah, uh, yeah. He's gone yeah, Denmark. Yeah. I, don't know. I still can't pronounce it. I've tried like four or five times. On TalkSport, they just call it in our house. Is that what yeah. they're saying? And they're taking a the piss. They're, <laughs> they're playing that song, our house, in the middle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I think we can just do that running. That's the start of today's episode. Uh, welcome back, Theo. Thank I'm you. Back. I made it back from Geneva. Yes. After two days stuck in the wilderness. Yeah. How was that? <laughs> it was actually really nice. I, I, I was actually I was stuck in a Hilton hotel. What? A, what That's a shame. not quite the wilderness. I know. I know. But I did a little run around Geneva Lake. Very pretty city. Enjoyed it. I'm back. Better than ever. Yeah. And today we are absolutely thrilled and honoured to be joined by Dapo Athelion, who is currently playing for Bolton. Thank you How for you, having ha- me. No, you're you're. Uh, most welcome. Well, that's, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> go on, mate. You can do it. You're most uh, welcome. There you yeah, go. Mate, yeah. how, how's it going? How, how have you been? How's the season going? Yeah, it's going really well, to be honest, uh, especially on the personal level. Um, I think we uh, we started off well. Obviously, we got promoted last year um, and then we started the season well and then had a bit of a dip, but we've had some good results. So we're making a little late playoff run. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see how the And you're currently on 11? Yeah, league? eleven goals in the league. Yeah. Do you have a name? Um, or do you start as many the season as possible? With a name? Okay. I mean, I started the season well, last season. I scored one, so to get more than last <laughs> game, of course. But um, yeah, so just as many as possible, really. I think I was doing well last season, but um, I think there was just a little, the last bit that was missing. So I think I went away in the summer, worked on it, and come back this season, done all right. So. It's, it's crazy how important like numbers are. We we're, were saying this about yeah. Smith Rowe recently because he's always had a lot of talent, yeah. But he never used to get those like goals. He didn't get the goal contributions that were after. And ever since you start getting those numbers up, um, obviously it relates in your performance as well. Yeah, he's level with Ronaldo. Who is Smith Rowe in the league this season? Yeah, in the Prem. That's good. That is a stat. Yeah. Wait, real, real, real quick then, real quick. <laughs> are you? Are you? I gotta ask it. I gotta ask it. Messi or Ronaldo for oh, you? Messi. Oh my days! Don't yeah, I don't even have to bat an eyelid. That was very that. early, by the way. I just oh, had to throw it in. Really I had to throw it in. You know, I've been missing. I had Chris <laughs> and Dion last week. Obviously, a Messi fan, but I do love him. But I'm, I'm very much. You're a Ronaldo. Fan. I'm a Ronaldo fan. Yeah, mm. I know, I know, I know. It's it's, it's poor for me, but yeah. it is what it is. Now I want to start off this episode. Bolton, in the past, have had and now have had a lot of like huge players. Um, I think we should try and build Bolton's five-a-side team. <laughs> All-time Bolton five-a-side team. Okay. <laughs> do you reckon you could do that? Yeah. Right, in goal, who are we going? You see Ascalainen, has to be. Yeah, that's Don't a number great one shout. Twice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Has to be. I might struggle defenders-wise. I know a lot of their attackers, but defenders What wise. formation would you go in a five-a-side team? I'm only having one defender in my team. One, two, one. Yeah, one, yeah, two, one. one, two, one. one, two, one, one with Ascalainen in goal. Yeah. We're putting Depp up front. You can put yourself in yeah, it. You, know. you can put yourself in it. Yeah, I could, but there's some big players there. Like, well, if we're, ta- if we're talking like currently, 
probably Dapper because a lot yeah, of the people yeah. that I'm thinking of have retired from football. Yeah, no, it's all time. It's all time, <laughs> yeah. though. Let's <laughs> go for a defender. Then. I think it has to be Gary Cahill. Gary Cahill. Good shout. I forgot. See, I was going to say, like, uh, this is ball knowledge right here. Go on. Ivan Campo. Send him a fielder, isn't he? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, what a setup. Oh well, <laughs> there's another. There's a definitely another defender. That, um, there's another. Tau Tau Ben Tau Ben Ayun Ben Ayun Ben Ayun yeah. Ben Ayun Yeah, yeah sure I don't think he. Did he? I don't know. Are you? I don't know. I, I f- you got to flick through the FIFA database in your head, mate. I, so you're I, like, I, for my centre back, I'd have Gary Cahill. Or Gary Cahill. Or Rob Holden. Rob Holden. Yeah. Have you? Did you ever get to play with Rob Holden? No. Nah. That's, right. he, yeah. that's he left a years long time ago, isn't he? Oh. Yeah. So I reckon Gary Cahill for the career he's had as well. But I think yeah. he definitely deserved it. Gary Cahill. What about your two midfielder spots then? If you're going the one-two-one, are we having any low knees in there? We can have any. Yeah, we can have anyone. <sighs> um, I think the midfield's the toughest spot because there's yeah. a big players to play for. So Bowling. again, you've got Ivan Campo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jack Wilshire. Mm. He was Wilshire. On there. Yeah. Yeah. So Stuart Holden. Stelios Yanakopoulos. Yeah. He's my favourite Bolton player of all time. Because of the name. Yeah. I loved him. I think it'd be out of those four. Or are Jay, there any are there any current players? Jay Jay Kotsch, oh yeah, a, a of course. As well. at, at five aside as well. Yeah, you just want to play. Oh, he has to be in the team. Yeah. yeah. That's my nickname at Bolton. It's Dapper Dapper. That's what they well Really? Well basically, there's a um there's a Bolton fan that does these things after games where you go, you know you can get like the highlights of the games and you can put like a voice over them. Yeah. He does it with voiceovers and he gives everyone nicknames. So, like, one of the lads he calls him, like, the Roadrunner. One of the lads <laughs> is Steve Claridge's Love Shard. <laughs> like, like, we've got one of our goalkeepers, is Grandpa Jilks, because he's old. He's at 40. Oh, so, really? Yeah. But they used to call me B-Tech Okocha. B-Tech oh, Okocha? Well, yeah. Dapper Dapper is an improvement. And then, yeah, so That's now this imp- season, because I've been doing well, they've upgraded yeah, me yeah. to Dapper Dapper. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I'm, That's quality. Yeah. It's nice. so good they named him twice. Exactly. Yeah, it was class. So, we like we played a Legends game in November, and like all of them came. JJ Okocha was there. He was there. Ivan Campo, your favourite, was there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great centre back. <laughs> what was it like playing with them then? Oh, it was good. It was unreal. Like it, like JJ Okocha is still a joke. Yeah, mate. He twisted up one of our players. Like it was, mm. it, yeah. What one current of, team? Current yeah, squad? Yeah, one of our lads. He, he, he went in like <laughs> he went in like proper hard and like tried to like snap him, and he just. Pushed, he pushed him over like done oh, so he's got him on the way he's muscled him yeah. wow he got him on the way it's done some step overs crowd's going mad oh wait I, <laughs> so think, you, wait, you, I know you, I think I saw that clip like yeah. it went like it went, I think it went like not like semi-viral I yeah. remember seeing like a little clip of JJ Okocha in this game yeah because he scored a penalty and him and he ran over to Sam Allardyce and they done their dance on the touchdown yeah <laughs> oh my god <laughs> that's gosh. so elite that's so elite yeah so who makes the two midfielder spots um I think Bolton fans will kill me if I don't see Ethan Campo and JJ Okocha. Good shout. So, and then Dapper up front. Nicholas and Elka up front. Bro. Oh, it's huge. Nicholas and Elka. Nicholas and Elka. Johan Elmanda. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that goal Johan Elmanda scored? Ridiculous, he just, like, wasn't it? Yeah, weaved yeah. in and out. For such a big guy to take that oh. kind of... I remember it was like the two memories I have of Stelios and... <laughs> I just love Stelios. <laughs> Stelios and Anelka playing for Bolton is when Stelios scored like a screamer against Arsenal and we're yeah. wearing that like yellow yellow kit yeah, yeah. yeah. and I'm pretty sure and I remember Anelka scored Anelka like a carbon copy of whizzed, that whizzed one into the top bin yeah Just ran off doing this they, they only <laughs> scored like worldies for that club <laughs> especially against Arsenal it's always yeah, against always. Arsenal I was watching it on like ITV the FA Cup yeah. it was a nightmare so you got Yaskalainen in goal yeah your defender was Cahill. Garrett Gary Cahill. Yeah. Two midfielders yeah. of Even Campo and JJ. No, yeah, JJ Kocha. Yeah. And up front, Nicholas and Nelka. I tell you what. Yeah. That's well, actually, uh, that's not a bad five aside. Well, we're, t- we're rotating Depo and Nicholas and Nelka. Yeah, I might be, I We've got, got six bench. players, but five yeah, aside. I don't know what Nelka's fitness is like. Five aside. Yeah. You know, every five minutes, the ref pauses for a second. <laughs> you yeah, you right. get six um, I, mate, I, I'd say that's a very, very good five aside team. Yeah. They could do well in the Seaford League. <laughs> <laughs> send them down there well our team's so currently undefeated so <laughs> really see, see how they get on yeah see how they get Getting on out mustard by JJ actually to be fair what happened the last time you played with JJ Kocha well 
I, I have played. I, I, I shouldn't have done this, oh, should I? I, I was. I was. You know, I was waiting for some. I was waiting for you to spring me up. <laughs> you know, he actually assisted me. Yeah. He was my assist. Yeah. His assist. You know, like on the map of the pitch, where there's like, you know, the messy. Oh, what's the? Just show him the. Clip. The Sergio Busquets is a, 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 yeah, a, yeah. a thing. Sergio yeah. Busquets gave the ball to Messi, and it's a cat and assist yeah. from like the halfway line. Yeah. Um, for my heat map. You can just show him. I could, I could get. Yeah, it's fine. I could do it. If we still see him, we can get. A, we can, we can get a live reaction of a very well the heat, skillful the heat striker. The heat of map how of, you compare the heat map of his assist would have been from just outside the penalty box of our own half. When you took it the rest of the Whoa! way. <laughs> I've seen you play to be fair. So is it, this is not the full goal, but oh, what it's the pin tweet. It I is the pin so. tweet. The pin tweet for the last five years. <laughs> Sorry, Jamie Carragher. When did you cut? Right. Did you, did, did, did you, obviously you're 24, right? Yeah. Did you watch a lot of YouTube growing up? Yeah. You yeah, did? I'd watch loads of YouTube. Did you? Up. Who Who were your like favourite YouTubers then? <sighs> Good question. I remember when I was in school, KSI was a big thing. The one. Yeah, yeah, it was a big thing. The GOAT for everyone. Um, I remember even trying to get an Elgato when I was younger. Really? <laughs> yeah. What, off the back really? of being inspired by JJ? Just, yeah, just off watching YouTube yeah. first and thinking, oh yeah. I could have a go at this. Just I swear, like every lad growing up just wanted like an Elgato. Yeah, just, everyone's like, like looked and... into it before and thought, oh, yeah, that is literally how it. my story started. Is it watching and I was like, I, I just want to do it. I could do yeah. that. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> yeah. Even if it's just like recording, like review and your mates, like recording your yeah. goals back and watching them back, it's just so elite. Yeah. No, I do. No, I think it is good that YouTube stuff's really good. I think something that I might have tried if I wasn't playing. Really? Football. Yeah. 100%. As like a different career choice. Yeah, I think so. Who else um, would you watch them apart from KSI? Um, obviously KSI, then a lot of the side men. Um, Is that current? Are you still keep up with? Kind of. Okay. Now, I can't, now if I'm on YouTube, I watch I watch a lot of Formula One videos now. Really? Yeah. As in the sport or people gaming Formula One? Well, both. But, okay. But, but gaming, yeah. Yeah. I got I got banned on the bus. No. Really? Yeah, for watching. I was watching. Wait, so do you know the guy? I always see him on TikTok. He's the guy that is just such a good driver, but he's quite known for his commentary voice. Oh, yeah. TRL Limited. Is that him? Yeah, yeah. He, he commentates, like, mate. Yeah. He is like. He's got that viral clip of saying, oh, I'm going down on the inside yeah, of the Yeah, 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 yeah. Viral, yeah. Mate, all the comps, like, you're built for commentary. F1 yeah. need to sign you. Oh, up. is that. Oh, really? my God. He's so good. You hear me, like, he's literally the perfect commentary yeah. voice, and he's so good at racing. Wait, so do you have your own. Set up. At I've home. got a set up at home. Yeah. Is it a nice. V set up? It's, it's all right. Yeah, it's a it's a wheel and pedals and things and. We should decent. get the boys to have a look at you know because there's it, there's like a quite competitive scene within our friend group yeah. of who's the best at F one and every year it's it so cycles, hard that game yeah though, it cycles through and and obviously the boys race um, we don't really well get I got I got. That, to, during the summer it got like really big and everyone was like buying their setups and whatnot yeah and i was like oh i'll buy the game playing on the controller i'm like i'm so shit yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm it's a so different shit. world yeah. and then harry gave me a spare wheel and i was like i'm gonna set this up it's, it's sat in the same bag in the same <laughs> corner of my room and not even touched i'm so sad yeah. because like it, i'm bet it's like well fun you're driving no yeah car. it's so much fun on the setup it's uh way better than the, i don't play on the controller anymore like, just the setup, pure the setup now yeah like there's so you been, do, do you follow normal games. Formula One as well? Yeah, yeah, big time. Yeah, what's your favourite driver? Oh, Lewis Hamilton. Okay. Yes, nice. I'm a Lewis fan. Yeah. What do you think of the? Uh, the can't end? speak about that. Uh. Speak about that. <laughs> you, I was a... stood off at my TV like this, like what's just going? Mate, <laughs> hey, my whole family were in the living room, just like on their feet, just like the... what? Yeah. yeah. We were absolutely. It, it, it's a. I don't want to go too far into it, but it was an, it was an actual piss take. Yeah. There's a documentary coming out on the 6th or 7th of March. Um, oh, the to Survive one? No, no, no. A it's, a, it's a Sky documentary. It's, they just titled it Max versus Lewis. Oh, yeah. And it's just purely, I think it's just purely about the season and that final race. Yeah. And they get in all of the different perspectives. But Drive to Survive is going to be sick. Yeah, my missus really likes Drive to Survive. Really? Yeah, like she was watching it with me. Actually, it's, it. it's the best way to get into F1 and it's yeah. been such a good, like... Yeah, because you get you get uh, attached to the stories behind the drivers and you know yeah. the, the teams and stuff, which is obviously is quite endearing. So mm. do you? So do you ever? Do you ever like? Because um, I know Lando does a lot of streaming. Did you ever watch any of his stuff? Do you ever get to chat to any of these guys? N nah, I've never. I've never. The only thing I watched was when in lockdown they did like a kind of esports thing where yeah. they had like some of the drivers racing 
with like professional like a sportsman like I remember I was on it yeah Chiro Mobile some other people they was on it and stuff so I watched that but so wh- other than that what was lockdown like for you then it was all right to be honest because so I I hurt my shoulder so when I was, I was at West Ham at the time so I hurt my shoulder um a few years before and it I had a like, few problems it kept dislocating oh. so I remember the w- the week before like lockdown all started we had a game at Derby and I'd scored two in the first half and then just before half time my shoulder came out again oh. it was about the sixth or seventh time that happened that oh, season in a collision mate. or just it's just like it was it was so weak that it, oh, what, I, I actually when you were running I could just like someone could pull me back and oh. like, it would just come out oh, it's a bit like Joe like, isn't it yeah that's, so that so that happened and then I was on my way to training and we all got a text saying oh the training ground's been shut everyone go home so then I rang the physio up and I said like, let's get them get the op done because I was thinking look if we're going to miss some games yeah. on that as well so I went there had the op done the day before lockdown started oh, just so then I just spent lockdown just like rehabbing myself really so I didn't really I didn't miss any football for it oh mate that's good perfect time yeah. isn't it really so yeah so I spent so I got this set up with like a, a mountain bike on like a stand. <laughs> I was doing my rehab like one arm yeah. in the front room and stuff. So that was all right. Hello, everyone. Hello. We have a message from, I'd say, one of my favorite sponsors of all time. You know me. I do like a drink. And what do I like better than a drink? A free drink from our friends at Beer 52. Nice. They are offering you a whole crate of beer from the globe. Wow. Okay. You know how normally if you buy a pack of beer at the at the shop, they're all the same beer. Not yep. in beer fifty two. <laughs> no. You get different beers from different places around the world and they taste different. They're absolutely fantastic. The current beers I possess are all based around countries from Europe. You know, I've got a nice IPA from Norway. Ugh. There's an Austrian beer in there. You know, I've just come back from skiing in France. I've got a beer from France as well. And what we have for you today is this. So if you go to beer52.com forward slash pitch, you get a free case of eight beers with 5 95 postage. Mate, a free case of eight beers for 5 95 And I will say this, you don't just get beers. No, 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 no. You also get a couple of tasty snacks and a magazine. Oh. I know, it's a banger. So 5 95 postage, beer52.com forward slash pitch. You may as well do it, you know. It's a super, super good deal. Back onto the pod. So did, did you, oh, you must have done a lot of cycling, indoor cycling then. Yeah. Do you like your cycling? Yeah, I don't mind it, to be honest. I actually we're, don't we're mind keen, it. We're keen cyclists. Big, big cyclists. Really, yeah. Yeah, like road it. cyclists. Yes. I got, in, I got into it over lockdown. Well, yeah. I think a lot of people did. Yeah. Um, and then I was just, I was actually watching a lot of Ben Foster on YouTube. Yeah, he's class, isn't he? Do you watch him sometimes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good, Some right? Some of his stuff's great, isn't it? And I just got, I was watching a lot of his cycling videos. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm just going to give this a go and get into it. And now, well, we've been fortunate enough, we've filmed videos with him, like, yeah. and I just love it. We cycled, we cycled to Paris. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 sick. It's, it opens up so many doors. Like, w- yeah. once you get on the bike, you can go absolutely anywhere. Yeah. Um, obviously, you just mentioned, obviously, you were at West Ham, but I want to throw it all the way back all the way back to your childhood. So, did some research. Go on. Um, you were at the Chelsea Youth System at yeah. Youth System at nine. What was that like? Really good. Um, I think for me, that was the best place for me to be because at the time Chelsea had invested heavily into their academy, into the facilities, mm. especially. So, um, at the Cobham Training Ground, they built this brand new building. Built, built the first team one first, and then across the road was the academy one. Yeah. Um, so. That was good, and like the coach in me had was top draw, and I had a really good age group. So yeah, I was gonna say you're obviously 24. So who who would have been in your age group? Um, so Dom Solanke, yep, Tammy nice. Abraham, uh, Fakayo Tomori. Um, Do you still keep in touch with a lot of them? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Um, they're everywhere now. <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> yeah. they're all over. Like Tammy's in Rome. Yeah, Fakayo's in Milan. And yeah, Dom's at Bournemouth. Um, it's quite a lot. There's a lot more. Jack Taylor, he's at Peterborough. Um, Chris Meppham is at Bournemouth as well. Wow. So yeah, my Irish group was like a, a age group where that was done really well. Yeah. I remember we used to go away on tournaments like on the continent and we'd win them all. <laughs> Wait, I was yeah. going to say like that because obviously a lo- at a lot of clubs there are so many players that don't make it. Yeah. But that age group, that sort of era for ch- like the Chelsea youth system, obviously the under eights, the under nines at the yeah. time, like 
is that quite weird for so many players to make it out of that age group that from that so young yeah because you get a lot of people who like they'll look at their photos of of uh, when they're younger yeah and they'll go oh yeah he's here and then i'll be about it like they make one or two of them but yeah in my team that like when we joined the under nines there's a Pretty much most of the team, maybe four lads who aren't actually playing professionally. That's crazy. That's because that's, yeah. so, that's so early as well. Yeah, yeah. That is insane. Because I know I've got I know someone who got he got released at like twenty two, twenty three. Yeah. And it's like I can't imagine what it's like for someone at that, that age when you when you've literally been playing like under twenty ones, you're playing under twenty threes football to just then get released. Do you have friends that were like in that position that you know that? sort of went through that yeah I like not at, not at Chelsea at other clubs um like from where I grew up around my area there's a lot of like my mates who played at other clubs as well and like they get to it is hard because you get to that age and stuff and mm. I think a big thing with it as well like when you get to 16 and you're doing your scholarship and like you're focusing a lot on football and you're not on your education and yeah. things like that and then it's like after football what do you what do you do really yeah so I have a few friends who are, who are in those that position and like they've had to go get like obviously normal jobs and yeah. things. So it's always tough because you have to like double down on football in order to get somewhere with it. Like you have to be fully invested into it, but that also sometimes comes at a cost of what kind of neglecting a normal career path should it all go south. You know, it's like that is, it's not make or break at sixteen, but like I'd, I'd much be, rather seems... be released at sixteen and knowing that. I now know what I need to concentrate on rather than you're getting to the under 21s, getting to the under 23s and getting released at 22 yeah. where you're like, what do I do now? Yeah, but well, I think that's where football's changed because back in the day it used to be 17, you get your offered your pro contract, you're in around the first team. Nowadays there's lads who get pro contracts but they'll never train in the first team in, yeah. in their lives. They'll be released after a year or two and then they've, they've never been in a first team environment. So like you're signing a pro contract and that a lot of kids for them, that's like, yeah, I've, like, I've kind of made it, yeah, thing, yeah. but it's not like even even for me up until what maybe like last year, I was, like in the back of my mind, I was thinking like, am I actually going to be able to do this as a career? Really? Yeah. Because I mean, I, I turned pro when I joined West Ham at twenty, but I I wasn't in the first team. I wasn't a regular first team player, and I feel like like after because a lot of people like again like you leave West Ham's under 23s yeah are you going to get a league club are you going to have to drop down to the conference and things like that and that's obviously the question for a lot of that yeah I suppose as a like a young footballer growing up you always feel like if you're necessarily like stuck in the 21 23 is reserved you do you obviously will have that thing in the back of your mind like is this where I'm going to be am I going to have to drop down am I going to make it it's not until you start playing first team football where you really start to trust yourself I'm guessing yeah um, first team football is way different especially nowadays because I think I look at it, the under 23 teams are getting younger and younger mm. and it's weird because like the big clubs like if they're best like 21, 22 year olds are in the first team yeah so <laughs> we're certainly are yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah literally yeah especially at Arsenal right now we've got the youngest so the youngest team it's in. like do like, you know what I mean like we've got at Arsenal you've got like the Bukayo Saka, Gabriel Martinelli, Smith Rowe, they could play 23s football for another three years. Yeah, yeah. Which is cra crazy to yeah. think about. So I think that's why so 23s football is becoming younger and younger. So the gap between that and first team football is even bigger. Yeah. And even like first team, like especially in the Premier League, but even like for lads that come from under twenty three football, under 23s football to like League One or League Two, like it's hard for them. Like, I struggled a few times when I, I went on loan. To, what, um, what was the most difficult adaptation from Prem under 23s to go to like lower league, League One? Um, I think when you're when you're at these under 23 clubs, you've got everything done for you. Right. Like you don't have to think about anything at all. You know, like food sorted. Yeah. Um, re uh, rehab recoveries all sorted for you. A lot of lads like. They go on loan. First time living away from home, got to cook for themselves. Yeah, that's hard. Um, like a lot of times you're in the middle of nowhere, and like you've got no friends and family around, and that's hard for them as well. And then the expectations on the pitch as well. That can be a hard thing as well for a lot of because lads. of the club you've just come from. Yeah, club yeah. you've come from, and then the club you go into might play a different style. Obviously, you've got lads who are experienced and like they're playing for their livelihoods. 
Yeah. So it's not like it's not like a twenty threes game where like obviously results matter in all football matches, but the results don't in the grand scheme yeah. of football doesn't matter really the yeah. result because but like obviously now for us like we're playing to, to be promoted, do you know what I mean? Or yeah. to survive. Yeah. And a lot of young lads don't understand that because they've not really been exposed to it, have they? Makes yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um so obviously you were at Chelsea up until you were about 14, is that right? Yeah. And then you had to sort of make a, de- a decision. Do you focus on school or do you focus on football? What was that like for you at 14? Um, it was all right, to be honest, because my mum and dad always kept me like level-headed in terms of like not not trying to focus too much on football because knowing that anything can happen yeah. at any moment. Yeah. Um, and being at Chelsea at the time, they would always say to me, like, if you look at the age groups above, because... I could always see like the lads above us and stuff. And he say like, look at how many of them are in the first team. There's not many of them. Yeah. So for me, and they always like I was always good in school. I liked school. School was it was all right for me. I had mates yeah. at school and stuff. So I I was all right in school. So they kept me like make sure I focused on both at the same time. So like even going through the age groups at Chelsea, um, like day release and stuff, it was like that. I'd go once a week rather than twice a week because I'd be in school. So when they got to fourteen and the Premier League introduced the um, thing where they wanted to get more like contact time with the players. So a lot of lads had to move from where they lived at home to like digs in Cobham. Okay. And then go to a school in around where Chelsea were and they do like less like oh. cl- less classes. So they just do the, ba- the bare minimum GCSEs and yeah. stuff. And like my parents just said like, I was in a good school as well. And they said they didn't want to move me out of the school. Yeah didn't want me to like sacrifice like having those good GCSEs because anything can happen yeah. really. So I think at the time, obviously it was hard, the decision, because obviously I was at Chelsea, it was great. Like I had good mates and I was enjoying my football, but like for the bigger picture, I kind of knew that, um, yeah, like I do need to get some, yeah. get my GCSEs, get my education in just in case. So yeah. that's I think that's the best decision you could have made. Yeah. Because I think there's so many parents growing up especially back in the day like they were f- so focused on their child making it as a footballer and just sacrifice absolutely everything but if you if your child doesn't make it as a footballer and you have sacrificed everything then they're fucked yeah they're li- they got nothing to fall back on so i think that's 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 probably the best decision you could have made yeah. did you think at the time that you were going to be a chelsea footballer I, I, the thing is i never really did like being completely honest yeah with my age group being so good as like I've told you some of the names and like at those ages they were just as good as they are now like flying like Dom Zelanke and yeah. Tammy were like always flying scoring goals and things like I probably knowing that it like being honest with myself I knew I was kind of like a middle middle of the age group kind of player yeah I wasn't like I'd have some really good games and I'd have some poor games but I was quite inconsistent being a kid yeah um and physically, I wasn't I wasn't very like big at all. Like, really? I didn't really I didn't really grow till I was about sixteen. Like I see people now, <laughs> literally, I see people that if I meet people now who I haven't seen since before, then they look at me like Jesus, like, <laughs> what's happened? Shut up, yeah, yeah, literally, because I was always I was every school I was the smallest in my year. Like I remember like the squad photos we used to have at Chelsea and stuff. I like I used to be with the age group below, like on the on the big oh, academy yeah. photo. I used to be on like. <laughs> With the age group below, because yeah. like there was all my height, <laughs> so yeah, like it was one of those things that I was kind of like in the middle of the age group, and like it, so I never really saw myself like playing for Chelsea. I just, I just was playing football at the time, really, because yeah. as a kid, that's all it is, really. It's just playing football. You can't. I don't really believe most many kids like picture it. Yeah, you know? you're but, just playing football. It just so happened to be for Chelsea yeah, at the time. Yeah. So obviously, at 14, you then moved to Canada. So I thought it was like yeah. super interesting. And he started playing for the Toronto FC and like the Premier League development squad. Yeah, so in um in Canada, so I, I went to uh, Canada. I think it was when I was, just when I was 15, I would move to Canada because my mum worked uh, over here on the Olympics. Oh, sick. And they were having the Pan American Games in okay. Toronto and I think it was in 2015 or something. Yeah. So... She got asked to work on that project. And so like me and my family all moved over. And one of my old coaches knew someone out at Toronto FC 
and obviously I lived in Toronto. It was the only like professional club that yeah. there was there. So they spoke to them and they got me to come in on trial. I remember go. I remember like my first day going there, and like not having a clue what to expect. And like, I got there, it was like unbelievable <laughs> building, like everything that was it was proper like nice and I was thinking well this is decent <laughs> like this is like this is like what it was at Chelsea um and I remember playing football and stuff and obviously like, everyone was getting used to like you're at my accent and stuff and, yeah and it was it was funny and stuff but um yeah then I was playing for the like senior academy team it was at the time which is like which was basically the reserves it was the, the last team before the first team yeah um and that was really good because what so the the problem they have over there is because you've the country or North America the, the North America the continent so big yeah it's not like here where you can like play for Chelsea play against Arsenal yeah which is yeah thirty minutes away like Montreal <laughs> it's a plane, is like right? seven hours yeah. away like Vancouver's eight hours the other way yeah. and then so that so what they end up doing is a lot of the academy teams they play in like regional leagues but okay. like they play years up so for ah, us right. what it was is because we was at the oldest i was 16 like just turned 16 at the time and like the rest of my age group was like uh between 16 and 20. we ended up playing men's football and like there was a new league that started called league one ontario which which we played in and like we played men's football and like that for me as a 16 year old i think that's what kind of made me the player i am today because learning at 16 how to play against men how to use my body to protect the ball and things like that i think that's what helped me so that was really, really good for me. I mean, that season we went on like we went unbeaten and we won the league, and we had like even as like a yeah, as like a group of like younger yeah. players. But obviously, we had a lot for us because like a lot of the other lads that that were playing, we were playing against. They had proper jobs and things. Like You're that. training and playing like a pro against these like yeah. other normal teams. But, yeah. even, but as you say, even so, like the f- the physicality must yeah. have been this, like the thing that your team probably struggled with against these guys. Yeah, yeah. I remember there was one game we went to and we got absolutely beat up. Like this, really, yeah, by men, yeah. Yeah, it was just mad. But did you beat him though? No, we that was yeah, uh, that was a preseason game that we lost. But in the league, I think in the league we were unbeaten the whole season. Um, no, I was I did quite well in that year. Like I think I got like like rising player of the year or so, one one of in the, yeah. one of those team things. Like you know what they do in America, yeah, yeah. all star team things. <laughs> yeah, so got like one of those things, and that was good. Um, we had some good players on our team. Like that was that was one thing I was really shocked about because like. You like us over here. We think about Americans and, and North Americans about football. We think, oh, they can't play football. Yeah. You, you always think like, oh, I could, yeah. I could do it over there. Yeah. yeah, But like the standards that was really high. Really. And like, there's again, there's lads from that team who I was in at Toronto FC. You're all playing in the MLS now, and doing well. Like one of my mates was like, he's an all star MLS all star. Really. He plays for Canada's first team. Oh, sick. So, yeah. Oh, sick. What I was gonna. Were you going to mention? Yeah, go on. No, well, you can mention it. I was mentioning, what is the... Cause it talks about the Premier League development squad. What is that? Well, out there? Yeah. I, I'm, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure. Because we... For us, there, again, it, a lot's changed since when since when I was out there. Yeah. Um, because they've, they've started to try and copy what we have over here in terms of, like having leagues that were and I think they might introduce promotion relegation but over there soon because again like it's it, in American sports it's so weird because some teams will start having a bad season and they'll start tanking the rest of the season so they get a better draft pick yeah and it's just it's weird it's like, imagine, sense, like, it? imagine like Burnley now that like, trying to lose every game so they can get a good young player the next yeah, season that, yeah. it's just it's just weird that doesn't make any sense yeah so I know when I was there, they introduced um, something called the USL, which was uh, effectively like the championship. So like okay. a lot of the MLS teams adopted like other teams or made their own second team. So yeah. like Toronto FC had Toronto FC 2, which is like their second team. So they've got a lot of their young players there. So that's probably what the equivalent of what I would have been in yeah. now. Um, but there's like loads of different like regional leagues and lots of things happen so like now they've got the Canadian Premier League as well which is like completely separate from the MLS and it's like all Canadian teams playing against each other and that the winner of that goes into the North American Champions League as well okay so that's that's pretty new will Toronto ever be taken out of that out of the MLS and put into the Canadian I don't think so purely because of financial reasons (laughs) yeah 
purely financially, I don't think so. It's probably why Swansea play in the yeah. English system. Yeah. Isn't it? So, yeah. yeah so, um, obviously, when you were at Toronto, um, there must have been quite, in the first team at Toronto, there must have been some bright, really sick players. Yeah, there so, were, to be fair. Um, I remember that season I joined. When I when I joined, the manager was, um, I think it was Ryan Nelson. Nelson. He used to be at QPR. Okay. Um, and Robert Earnshaw was, was he used Robert to play. Earnshaw. Yeah, he was there. Um, and then that season, Rob, uh, Ryan Nelson got sacked. Um, a new manager came in and uh, they brought in Jermaine Defoe, <laughs> Michael Bradley, Josie Alves. And they were all the people that you were sort of in the same vicinity. Yeah, so Chivinko? like we'd see them. Yeah, Chivinko come oh. the year after. Nice. And things like that. So like that was unreal like. I remember going over and training with the first team when I was like 16 and like, like training against Michael Bradley and like he was the fittest person I've ever really? met in my life. Yeah, because <laughs> the MLS season starts in, um, starts like around this time. Yeah. I think they just started last night. Yeah. So it starts around this time and like he obviously had the full preseason, went into the MLS season, was smashing, playing every game. Then I remember that year there was a World Cup, went to the World Cup, <laughs> played every game in the World Cup, came back and like, did a beat test and he broke like he finished the beat test. Really? It's like the James yeah. Milner of the, of America. Yeah, he was crazy. He was super fit. What was it like? Uh, obviously, training and learning from Jermaine Defoe. That it was good because um, he always used to take the mick out of me because support <laughs> Arsenal. And he's a Spurs person. Yeah, yeah. Really. <laughs> but um, yeah, good because I think even then, like you see how sharp he is, um, and like just the little things he does like he just drift drift and the ball come anywhere near like him or the box he's so sharp and then his finishing was just unreal so did he give you any tips directly you know when players talk about oh I had a mentor mm. at a club is it a case of mentorship is you watching what they do or does he come over and be like yo if you take this a little bit differently then it depends on the club and obviously the player I think so obviously there it was hard because again with their seasons and stuff like they've got an away game it's not about popping down the road it's about getting on the, on the plane <laughs> yeah. so like we wouldn't see him a lot of the time especially during this season we didn't get to see a lot of a lot of the players but um like when when i was like if i did go over and train with the first team like i would see him and stuff and stuff like that but he was only he was only there for a season and then obviously javinko come and i mean watching just watching the tv with him was was enough because he was unreal like, I was, <laughs> he was so good yeah um, what was your schooling like out there? Because obviously I'm guessing with your parents, as you said, they were quite heavily focused yeah. on the schooling. Did you go to any universities out there or anything like I, that? Yeah, so I went to, I went, so I did, I was out there for two years. So yeah. my first year I went to, um, I finished off school. So I did, I went to a high school out there, which was very strange because it was like, kind of like you know as kids over here we watch like i used to watch like disney channel and stuff you see like <laughs> what high schools are like in yeah, america and yeah. stuff and you go over there and it's like pretty much the same like, <laughs> literally exactly how it is corridor full of lockers really and, yeah just like i've never had a locker in my life <laughs> what, what am i doing like, with this and stuff like, covered in stickers as yeah well, just yeah like it, it was just it was strange but it was good again it was a good experience um like you've got all sorts of like weird traditions over there like like the prom thing and stuff like that did you have to go to like prom yeah we like we had a prom and stuff yeah it was funny because prom like around when like proms happen like it's like this thing with like prom proposals like yeah proposals. yeah yeah and it's so much drama in schools like really? people saying yes and then like saying no because they didn't want to actually go because <laughs> like, i swear like in america like prom night and prom proposals like they're as big as like an actual marriage proposal yeah you're married like, for life at that point. yeah if you, if you go together at prom yeah like that's it you're together forever yeah. did you have to do that did you have to get on one knee for someone or not nah nah <laughs> I didn't get on one knee for anyone <laughs> <laughs> nah I didn't a couple of my mates did did they yeah they did some elaborate stuff but oh <laughs> one of the lads to he, he, he asked his mum to borrow her like a van. Oh no! <laughs> and, Wait, what? Yeah, and he put sticky notes all along the side. Oh, of the van, same prom, and he's like driven around like the front of the school, like honking his horn, and obviously he's got like the no. Out the window. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. can't let him live that's in that. Yeah, that's why. Like a lot of the time, like lads would like. I remember one. There was one kid who did it in like the dining hall in front of everyone, the whole school. Oh, that's and, like, right. She said yeah, and then like apparently like 
the next like, after lunch like she called into the side and said I said yeah to be polite and polite oh you know what you gotta respect oh, yeah. it like imagine she'd gone nah sorry yeah. in front of the whole school she, she respected it. his feelings but obviously yeah, didn't yeah really. we, we respect that from her we respect that from her <laughs> yeah. so obviously you finished school at high school yeah and then what did you do after that for and the then, second year and then I went to University of Toronto oh sick which was good but I think I went to I, I went to young to university really yeah because I think because of the schooling system out in Toronto you, know, um, you finish school a year earlier than we would here so I was only like 17 at the time. Did you oh. stay on campus? Yeah, okay. stayed on campus. Um, so that, again, that was hard. I was young, staying yeah. away from home. And is this the same time as you're training and playing for Toronto yeah. as well? So you're so, doing a lot of traveling, uh, yeah, I guess. I was, yeah, I was doing, so I used to like go to uni, then get on the like the, the subway mm. up to the campus uh, where the, like, the training ground was, and then go across. I mean, in the winters, it was tough because Freezing yeah, up. Canada winters aren't. Oh, they're not the best, I tell you. That. Did, would you have to like train indoors? Yeah, we trained on a dome. Nice. Trained on a dome, which was like, it was all right to be fair. Yeah. But obviously, the season, that's why the season's like this time goes through yeah, the summer because like, can't put in the otherwise, winter. yeah, it's bad. Like, did the uni team try and snipe you? So I didn't know, I did play for the uni team. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I played you... for the uni team as well. Okay. Which was all right. Sounds like double one football of, each yeah, week. Yeah, because one of the uni, it's one of the coaches. Um, at the uni team is also like a coach at the academy. Oh right, quality. So he was like, yeah, he was all right. Like, I'm, su- to play I'm for surprised the uni Toronto well. let you play for the uni team. Yeah, but that's the thing out there. It's not like over here where it's like proper contractually based and stuff because it's like they're not going to make you sign a contract because what you're going to do fly eight hours and go sign for one of their rivals. <laughs> yeah, yeah like, true. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. So that's the that's the thing. Like whereas here, like when you're eight, nine and stuff, they're getting kids to sign contracts to because they make sure like no, West, yeah. West Ham are making sure they're locking down players so they don't go to Arsenal or yeah. Chelsea. But there's so many football teams in such a close proximity in England. Yeah. yeah. That you just... Well, it happened to you, I believe, didn't it? When you were younger, did you turn down Arsenal? Did they approach yeah, you as well? Yeah, I did. I you know. did? Yeah, I know. I did. Uh, <laughs> Don't know how you know that, but yeah. Mate, no, I, got my, I, got my, I got my sources. Yeah. yeah. Was that tough? You kind of, but the setup at Chelsea was better. It was way better at the time. So, and Chelsea caught the Chelsea also. There was, at the time, they were like top dogs. They kind of, they did bribe me kind of thing. Yeah. Like, give me tickets to Chelsea United when they won the league. <laughs> uh, I saw the sat Premier League trophy and I thought, oh, that's a bit <laughs> Yeah, we want to go to the champs. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, oh my worry. god that, no one yeah, no one had that voice break so obviously you're 18 you return back to england you head to loughborough uni yay i went there it, did you yeah yeah we were yeah. at the same time no different you were younger than me so i doubt it yeah. when were you yeah 2012 oh no what was loughborough like good yeah it was really good what were you Think. studying as well civil engineering nice yeah which was really hard was it yeah it was very hard um, what made you choose that? That's what my mum do, does. Well, that's what she did at uni, but she yeah. doesn't do that now. But I was always good at like maths and physics and things like that. That yeah. was kind of my kind of thing. So yeah. that was, I don't know, it's it's hard. I find, I, f- I still think the uni system is a bit false because you can't, like, how can you ask an 18 year old kid what they want to do for the rest of their lives? Yeah. And then they want you to choose that, they just. Yeah. Narrow path, but I think it's a good there. recommendation for Loughborough, given the fact that what happened off the back of the Olympics and the fact that your mum worked on the Olympics. But yeah. she was like, Loughborough's really good. It's been it's been yeah. revamped, man. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, Loughborough was. Yeah, when I went to Loughborough, like I was like shocked because I think so before I came back to England, I was speaking to Duke University in America, and they was talking about giving me a scholarship to go out to study in America and play football there and mm. things. Cause I knew one of my other friends who was at Toronto FC with me, he was at Duke and like, like in America, those Dukes like one of the biggest sports schools. Like I've heard stories about their basketball team. Yeah. Like they apparently like have a h- apartment block in the middle of like the city for the basketball team. <laughs> really? Like, yeah. oh, like if you're word. on the basketball team, you get an apartment in that apartment block. And apparently it's crazy Like they get treated like Kings out there. Like if you're in a, like, NCAA basketball team like they're like one of the best yeah so like I've heard stories about like what it's like out there so I ended up didn't, up, didn't end up going out there and I ended up at Loughborough and like it was like it's the closest thing I think there is in England to like an American campus yeah, to start yeah, uni yeah, for sure so that was good and the, the football there was good as well I think I remember um, 
calling before going to Loughborough. I remember like trying to call up the football team because the football team start a bit earlier because they play in the Saturday league as well. Yeah. So I remember calling them up and trying to sit like say, oh yeah, I'm, this is like me. That's where I've come from. Like, can I come like, and train? They were like, oh, you're gonna have to come to Charles. I said, like, oh, cool. <laughs> it is a brutal process. So then it? I remember like when Charles came about. Uh, I remember playing in the Charles. I think like, if, but anyone can go to Charles and think. Yeah, so, yeah, like, yeah. It was a bit false i remember scoring like a hat trick in like the first half <laughs> it's honestly it's like... honestly like a i remember when i went it's like a saturday after like a friday night out and you just sort of people that are still hung over just rocking a football did you go trials. to the trials as well yeah i didn't obviously didn't make it but i know, was too scared to go to my trials really i was terrified I, well i played because obviously there was uh, there's college well uh, yeah, yeah. how uh, colleges at loughborough that i ended up playing for the towers football team uh, you was at towers yeah yeah <laughs> where were you um rutherford <laughs> oh right okay yeah yeah there was a little gym there that potentially yeah. went to as well that was the that was not too far from the track right yeah yeah sorry yeah. it's just a little no, it's just like, little little free uni moment there yeah. but, um, i'll stick down into bournemouth will i <laughs> yeah play um, for my intramural league they're doing it right aren't they they're like quarterfinals of the yeah. fa vars, FA vars no, yeah, yeah. do you still keep right. up with the team yeah somewhat there's there's like there's one lad that plays there who like who I knew from London who like when I was at Loughborough asked me like what like can I get into stuff because he he was at Watford and he got released from Watford and obviously he wanted to go down a different path so obviously I told him yeah. about Loughborough and obviously he saw what Loughborough helped, helped me get onto so mm. obviously he's there so obviously I keep in touch with him and I see obviously he's doing well. Oh, is he in the team? Yeah, he's, oh, he's nice. converted from a right back to a striker and he's scoring goals now. Really? So, yeah. Oh, mad. <laughs> Have you always been a forward? Yeah. So, well, this is a thing. I started off as like a winger, like Sunday league and stuff when I was young. Um, and then being quite small, like I was used to get put like left back and right back yeah. and stuff. Um, and then like I went into centre mid for a bit. And then I've obviously now like a, a winger mainly but we can play up front as well yeah yeah so obviously you said Loughborough plays Saturdays so are you playing men's football whilst at Loughborough University yeah. then yeah so yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's in the United Counties League so it's a proper team yeah I, I, I remember when I said earlier that um, Man United had a pre-season against them it's a real actual football team in the yeah. system so when you're at Loughborough Uni playing playing the FA Cup and everything yeah, yeah, yeah. what yeah, yeah. That's interesting. So the crowds you get at Loughborough Uni games are mental as well. Yeah. That sounds like the dream. Yeah. That yeah. That sounds sick. It's very, the pitch that you're playing is very, have oh, you seen Ted unreal. Lasso? Yeah. It's it's all, you know the training ground at Ted I need Lasso. To, I it's can, I need to watch it. Identical yeah. to that. Pitch. You've not watched Ted Lasso. Everyone keeps telling me, Phil, oh, you're yeah, love you've got Ted Lasso. So you've got to do it. Yeah. So w when you're at uni at Loughborough, then in your mind, are you still thinking I'm going to be a pro footballer, or are you thinking I'm at uni playing football? Not rich, yeah. I was. It was more of the second one because um, before I went to Loughborough, I was playing like in the summer. I was like training with like uh, Tooting and Mitcham, the non-league yeah, team, yeah. And, and like I was just before because Loughborough didn't start until about October, and the season started in August. So I started playing that season just with their like twenty threes team, yeah. and um, I remember that was doing well there. And like then the Charlton scout was saying, "Oh, like we'll get you a trial. Want you to go and try the Charlton things." And like that never came about, but like everywhere I do, like there'd be people that'd be like, "Oh yeah, like I'm a scout and I could get you here." So like in the back yeah. of my mind, I was like, "Oh, there's a chance still." Yeah. But um, yeah. So when I got to Loughborough, um, I kind of it was a similar thing. Like I was playing football, just just playing. To be honest, mainly just playing like for fun. Yeah. And just playing to play, um, and then in about November time, um, the head of football at the time came came up to me and said our oh, um a team in the conference has put in seven day request for you and i i said to him what's that because I, I didn't know what that was and mm -hmm. seven day request is like a non-league thing where it's like before a club gets like permission to speak to a player they have to put in that like, give the other club seven days notice so he said like they put in a seven day request to speak to you so then after the seven days so obviously i was waiting on my phone like, yeah for seven <laughs> waiting for the text to come <laughs> yeah. through and then uh, their manager rang me. The name is Liam McDonald. He rang me and he was like, "Oh, like we've been watching you. And, like, like we really want you like to sign for us and things like this." That's sick. Um, and I was like, 
at the time like me and my dad would talk about it and like it was kind of reluctant because obviously the club was like in Birmingham at the time so I'd have to travel and that was thinking about how it would affect my uni stuff um not too far though like, yeah not too far yeah. but um but I remember they had a FA Cup second round game come uh, against Luton and he was like saying to me like oh like if you sign like with us like oh, you'll start against Luton <laughs> On, on Saturday nice. and stuff. And he's like, oh, you'll play on the left against Luton and stuff. And I was thinking, oh, like, what do I do and stuff? It's like, Luton as well. Yeah, so I, I didn't end up signing at the time. And I remember, I remember I, I was, because I got an injury, so I didn't sign with him that week. I got an injury on the Thursday. Um, so peak. Yeah, so, on, but then on the front, I was on, uh, on the Saturday, I was watching the Loughborough game and on in the stadium, they had like on the TV, like the final school BBC thing. And I remember at half time going out and looking at the score and Solomon Moors were freeing a lot away at Luton. I was thinking there might have been a third round there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's was, my time. And I was thinking, oh my God, like, what have I done that? I should have signed for them. And then I remember going back in after the game to check the score and they lost 6 3. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, they. If, would, fucking losing. Um, would they have given you another opportunity at that point? Obviously, you were injured, but like, could you have signed seven days later? Or um, Yeah, no, yeah. So I think, so obviously, what happened is I got injured. Um, and then, but the thing is, the head of football said like, there's other clubs that want you, like Rochdale. Okay. Want Rochdale wanted to take me on trial. Um, Crew Alexandra at the time they wanted to take me. Um, and when I came back from my injury, I think it was around January. Um, he said, "Oh, like Rochdale are really keen. So, like, can you like obviously do you want to go then?" I was like, "Yeah, of course I do." <laughs> so I remember like they said, oh, "Okay, cool." So they'll put me up for three days I think it was so I remember one of their lads uh, the goalkeeper Comrade Logan he is Comrade Logan yeah he's he from Leicester yeah Comrade Logan yeah I swear that ever I always that's the guy that oh people compare you to people compare me yeah, to you do yeah, kind of look kind a little bit yeah. oh I don't want to hear it I, don't, I get tagged in like pictures of him yeah. every day Every day, turn your head like yeah. a meerkat. There. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I bloody know that name. Oh, yeah. I know that name. People call him the polar bear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That was my nickname at school as well. Yeah, yeah. You found the yeah, bloody Comrade Logan. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Fucking Conrad. Yeah. So he's from Leicester, and he, hmm. um, so they said, oh, he'll pick you up. So he picks me up, and like, and obviously he was talking to me but I was knackered at the time like he was talking I remember dozing off in the car. Oh, no. <laughs> and then we get to we get to training and like obviously he's like telling all the lads oh yeah he's dozed off in the car <laughs> with me but I remember training with them and like for me like they were a league one side doing really well I think they were in the FA Cup third round as well um I think that was near the playoffs so that was good for me to like get in there and see what it was like trained I feel like I did all right mm. um and I remember at the end of the three days I was there, their manager said to me that, look, you've not got any experience in men's football. Um, we know that Solly or Moores are interested in you. Like if For us, we think you should go there and obviously we'll keep an eye on you. So I remember on my way home just thinking like, because seeing the level and seeing that I wasn't too far off it. Yeah. So I thought to myself, let me just like, go to Solly or Moors. It's a good opportunity. It's a conference. It's not a bad league. Um and what was better than what I was playing at the time anyway. Yeah. So, and I was thinking, because I, I used to like do referee in five a side, like, <laughs> nice. just to get some like money on the side and yeah. stuff. So thinking, oh, I could just play like, for Solio in, instead and rather than having to do that. So ended up like signing for Solio and like, that was really good. I remember like, I remember I was like proper excited. All my mates were because like come up on BBC and things like that. Yeah. And so I was like prof proper excited on BBC Sport and that. Um, signed for them. And then we played Sutton United at home. Big game. On, I think it was the week after. And they, Sutton had just gone through in the FA Cup and they had Arsenal coming up. Wait, that was that Leeds. Was it Leeds that they beat at that point? I'm not, not sure. But, no, they... but we went to the Arsenal Sutton game. Do you remember? That that's Did you come? No, I, I went to the Leeds one beforehand. They beat Leeds and then played Arsenal. So oh, I went to that Arsenal exact yeah. game. So, they, so, they, so I think the week after they played us, they had Arsenal. And I remember like that there was that. I remember Sutton, they were bad because in their minds, they was all thinking Arsenal. We've got yeah. Arsenal. Don't want to get, get injured. injured. Yeah, don't yeah. want to get booked. And all of this. And I remember um, playing a game. I was on the bench. I came on and then I scored with my first touch. That's yeah. such a good feeling. Yeah. And that, after that, like it was like, 
nerve settled. That was really good. Um, then you the scored rest... your first touch at the club. Yeah. <laughs> not bad. <laughs> what a debut. Yeah, it's not oh a bad debut. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, my mate. To be fair, he 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 was he made his debut as well, and he scored like. He scored in the first minute as well. Oh my days! And Both set the so, bar so yeah, high. So he scored in the first <laughs> minute of the half, and then scored in like just before half time. So he'd scored two, and then he like got sent through. I think it was offside, to be honest. But <laughs> yeah, we yeah, take it. We take it. And that like, we was like ne- next to each other, and he sweated it. So he did. <laughs> sweated it as well. Yeah. Oh man. Tactical. You know what? What mate? You could have gone. You could have been selfish, gone for the hat trick there. Yeah. That's a FIFA player right there as yeah. well. He, he says a sweat. Got to take the goal. Got to yeah. take the goal. Um. So obviously you're playing. Conference. Yeah. Are you still at uni? Are you doing it online? Are you? Have yeah. They just still, you permission? I was still at uni. Yeah. That's so. That was the end of the end of that season. So obviously, I signed in about February. Um, I was still at uni that season, and, and I was playing. Yeah, playing in the conference, and that second that half of the season, obviously, my first six months at Solid was really good. Like, I was playing week in week out. Like it was mid table when I joined, and like we was doing all right like pick up some good results here and there. Yeah. And I, I think I scored about, I scored like three or four goals to uh, in the first couple of months, um, which was really good for me. And then um, I remember we had some tough results as well. We lost 9-0 away at Tranmere, which yeah. was still one of the worst days of fo- in football for me. It was, really? yeah, oh, it was terrible. It was one of those days where it, it was nine and it could have been like 20. Really? Which every attack is no, a goal. No banner, it could have been 20. Like, <laughs> I remember after the game, it was that bad. They had a, they put up a video on their YouTube like of the goals nine nil, and they put up a seven minute video of the near misses where they hit the post. <laughs> Our keeper saved it. They missed the pen, literally like every. And it wasn't even like we we didn't even start the game badly. Like just everything they did came off. I remember like the ball bubbled out wide, and like their lads like whipped the like the most amazing crossing <laughs> ever, and it's just that like, hit their strikers piece, and they had gone top bins. Just mad like their striker Cole Stockton at the time, he had a hat trick and missed the pen, but in the first half. <laughs> I remember, I remember at half time like walking down the tunnel three 0 down and he's walking off with the match. <laughs> <laughs> and he's missed the pen yeah. and he's still bagged himself a first yeah. half hat trick. I know. Oh man, it's mad and that and it was the worst day in football for me because I remember early on in the game that like, I've been played through and like their defenders come across and like he's his fingers like pokes my eye. And I couldn't see out my, my right eye for the rest of the game. Oh, really? Yeah, Stop I ended up in blood. hospital in the evening because like my eye was like proper like red and stuff. And they said, yeah, it's just obviously like been bruised and stuff. But yeah. it was like blurry and things like that. I mean, when you start to lose vision, your eye just start like panicking. Like, oh my god, I'm gonna blind. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna play football. I remember at six nil, like my number come up on the sub ball. That was the quickest I've ever done. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Get me off Get the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but, so are you in your first year or your second year at uni? Right, I was now? in my first year. Your first year. Yeah at the time and you that you so you moved to doing your course online yeah after um that season i did yeah so did you end up finishing uni no i, I didn't you didn't no i didn't in the end because it was a thing where again you said it earlier about like, with football i think you've got to give it everything yeah i think i felt like the, the one thing that was holding me back was the fact that i was kind of trying to spread myself a bit too thin so in too many plates yeah i think i i am um, i I made a decision at the beginning of the next season to um, like just pause at the time, pause my uni and try and like give it my all for f- football for that season. Um, at Solihull? At Solihull, yeah. yeah. And that started off the season like really, really well. Um, I think I'd scored, I think I'd scored nine goals by the time we were in November. Oh shit. And like we were bottom of the conference at the time and I was like, Top second top goal scorer in in the league and that like, we were bottom of the league and I, and then I went on a drought. It was, it's funny because we had this bet. So my manager had a bet with the, one of the security guards at the ground. Yeah, this guy called Decker was like the funniest character, <laughs> proper Birmingham guy. Like he's hilarious. Like he had a bet because obviously like it was funny. He was like he was saying to me like you ain't scoring ten goals this season. You ain't scoring ten goals. And my guy, my manager was like to him, he'll score ten goals before Christmas. And that deck was like going in five hundred pound. Like put, so put them two had. Were you aware one. of this? Yeah, I knew okay. About it. Yeah. No more pressure, though. Yeah. Like. Yeah. yeah, I knew about it. Um, and then <laughs> them two had a bet, and I remember I was on nine by November, and that my gaffer was giving it like this. And <laughs> yeah. Stuff. And I went in a drought, and then I didn't score a goal until 
like the day after the event ended. <laughs> 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 like, no, New Year's Day. New Year's Day. New Year's Day. I scored my tenth and eleventh. Manager must have been fuming. Yeah, <laughs> he's, like, he's got the goal. <laughs> I know, but that's so funny. Nah, yeah, so again, so that season started off really well for me, um, and like I was linked to all sorts of clubs, um, and there was like a thing in my contract which like meant that I could leave. Okay. Um, so like we came to like an arrangement like with Solio, like basically saying to them like like obviously we want you to like cash cash in on me basically yeah so they kind of helped me leave and i remember that january going all around to loads of clubs like on trial and stuff because like being a young lad being like from non-league being quite unproven yeah. a lot of people like wanted to like try before you buy kind of thing oh so, you, so they basically forced you to trial so yeah they yeah they, they were letting me go on trial so i went to birmingham um i went to wigan went to peterborough um but was gonna go to oldham but in the end, I kind of got fed up with going to these places yeah. and like kind of felt like a bit part kind of thing. Because like at the end of the day, they've got like their league schedule still going on. They've got like bigger fish to fry at the time yeah. rather like, than thinking about signing a 20 year old kid yeah. who's unproven. Um, so like, obviously I didn't go to Oldham at the time, but I remember being at Peterborough on deadline day, like the day before deadline day. I remember I trained with him the two days before. And on the, I think it was a Tuesday or something that their manager, Grant McCann, sat me in the office and said, oh, like, we want to sign you. Like, we're going to offer you like a contract. And it was their league one club at the time. And I was buzzing. Yeah. I remember that like, being sat in the chair, like, for, like proper nervous. Like, play it oh. cool, play it cool. Yeah. Um, and he's like, yeah, like, like we're going to sign you. I, I'm going to go speak to like our director of football and like, we'll get onto your agent and so and so. So while they're doing that, I was in the change rooms and all their, the rest of their lads had left. Yeah. And I was in the change rooms. I remember like just being like on the change room thinking like, wow, like this is really happening. Like you're going to be a professional footballer. Yeah. yeah. Um, I remember being buzzing and then I get a call from my agent and he's like, oh, like, yeah, like it's good, but what they're offering isn't like what you're worth. Yeah. He said like, if you stay at Solio, like cause Solio were going to offer me a new contract to stay and they would have offered me more than what that people was going to offer really? me at the time. Yeah. Not, I didn't, non-league would offer you more than yeah. League One. There's a lot of money in non-league, you know. Yeah. Like, a lot of lads like will drop out of the leagues to go play non-league. Like Wrexham are doing it at the minute. Like, yeah. They find a lot of players from League One, League Two because they're offering them more than they're running yeah. in these leagues. So. Crazy. Ryan Reynolds bank account, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, literally, yeah. literally. Yeah, literally. Yeah. So, so yeah, they was, they was going to give me more and like it was this thing where it was like, I was saying like, look, I just want, I just want to go. I want the opportunity to go yeah. and be. Like I was saying to my dad and my agent at the time, like, I want to go and play football. Like, yeah. that's what you paused league, you yeah, for, right? At a league mean, one club. Yeah, like it's a good level. Like, there's if I if I do well, then obviously money will come later. Like, I didn't really care about money yeah. at all. Like, yeah. it's not that's not why I play football. So, obviously, I remember just on the deadline day was the next day. So I drove back home to like to where I was staying in Loughborough. And then I had to go back into the Solio in the morning. And I remember driving to Solio and then getting to the gate and um, the like the owner, well not the owner, director of football at the time, he like said to me, oh, like, we're gonna go to like a hotel across the road because we'll, like, we'll speak about what's happening. And basically he was saying to me, well, we've had a phone call and he said, West Ham are having a meeting about signing you. And I said, what? And he said, yeah, West Ham are having a meeting about signing you, we've, we've got to wait like, till 11. So he said that, I think he said that the guy, Terry Wesley, he's sat down with like uh, Karen Brady and David Moyes, like speaking about whether they're going to sign me. So I'm thinking, well, hang on a minute. So I'm sat in this hotel with him waiting for this phone call. So, you must have been so nervous. Yeah. Like, like thinking like, wow, what's going to, because I, I knew I, I was going to go somewhere. Yeah. But I thought it was going to be Peter, but I was going to, I was going to put my foot down and say, look, I just want to go there. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, but then obviously he then like, he got a phone call and he's like yeah West Ham want to do it so um, that's mental he said yeah you got to drive yourself down to London <laughs> driving down to London thinking don't crash don't crash yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah literally like proper brick in it um, so nervous I met up with my, uh, my dad and my brother and then they drove me to the West Ham training ground where I met uh, some of the staff um, like the academy staff and stuff because I was 20 I was joining the 23 squad 
So I met up there staff, went for a medical, which was mad because never in my life. So you, you're medical. using yeah. all the, are you using the first team at facilities to do all yeah, the medical yeah, and stuff? Yeah, so the medical was, it was just done in a private hospital. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> Take like that. Having heart scans and like all sorts of like checks. So you've, like so in the space of like 24 hours, you've gone from training at Peterborough. Yeah. To then finding out West Ham are interested and now you're suddenly having a medical. Yeah. Like what? Surely you're just like what? What's fuck? What's happening right now? Yeah, it was mental, honestly. Um, like, it didn't, it didn't hit me until a few weeks after because like, deadline day was manic. Like yeah. it was because I had to drive down from Birmingham, which took me a couple of hours. Then do my medical, and then West Ham was signing and selling some other players, and like obviously I was bottom of the list because obviously <laughs> I was the youngest. I yeah. wasn't proven, whatever. Um, but I remember being like sat in the London stadium for hours, like waiting to like for them to bring the paperwork for me to do it. We had to get an extension from the Premier League because like deadline day, you know, like how it finished at 11, but you yeah. can get like a two hour extension. Yeah. We got that. And I remember going into the office about half 12, half an hour left of the window, like signing all the papers, blah, blah, blah. And um, <laughs> the uh, the uh, set club secretary at the time, like he sent off the um, paperwork to the FA. And he, um, like, we were sat there, he's like, yeah, it's all done. And then, like, a couple of minutes after one, he got an email. That's, and you know, like, when you email someone and it bounces back, and he's got an email saying, like, saying it bounced back. And, like, he was, like, slightly panicking. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> trying, to play it cool. trying to play it cool. Yeah. Thing, saying, oh, yeah, there might be a problem. So I'm thinking, wow, imagine I've been here all this time. Like, yeah. If it had bounced back and, like, it hadn't gone through, then it, the deal would have been off. Yeah. I'd have been back at Solio. Like every, all the medical, everything would have been for nothing. And so he calls the FA up and he's like, oh, like, we've just sent some paperwork through like before, like one, like, did you get it? And they're like, yeah, yeah, we got it. Fine. Oh, and I was like, <sighs> Honestly, right, so no. That's that. Such a relief. Like that. Wait, so, and that's, I start. Yeah, then it's done. Then they were like, oh, you're in tomorrow morning. So we got, there was a hotel they had for me. So I went to the hotel, like, they got me a cab to the hotel. At 1am as well. Yeah. <laughs> 1am and I was in it then they said oh, someone's coming to speak up at half 8 tomorrow so I went what there. was that night's sleep like it was alright um, <laughs> again it was just like manic like you just you just knew it was going from thing to thing to thing yeah um, I remember I had to do something with uh, like I had to do like an extra part to my medical the next day because there was like something come up on one of my heart scans but mm. uh, so I had to go and have a heart am I right the next day so I went in met the lads got kit then I went straight to London on a tube um, in my kit with like a member of staff to this heart MRI I remember being on the train and like some guy goes oh you're that kid that you just signed at West Ham oh all the best and I was thinking like, really oh. I was thinking oh, wow this is mad and like, obviously the member of staff was saying like yeah, that, yeah you have to expect it now like you're at, like, obviously a big big club yeah, especially yeah. in London um so yeah and then obviously i was cleared to train then i started training with the lads and then trained a couple of times and i made my debut on i think it was the monday night we played sunderland at home and i think we drew nil nil but that was i was one one i think because it was a good game but i mean i made my debut and jack Rodwell was playing center back for them and i was playing up front <laughs> thinking it was mad yeah but yeah see it, 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 it's so funny like it happened so fast yeah like so fast like Say, say it took you a couple of weeks for it to like settle in or like realize like it took me way longer than that really oh yeah because going from part-time football in non-league so like obviously when i started at solo we were tuesday thursday nights training yeah. then we went to like three days a week at solo which was like afternoons but still was nothing compared to like what we were doing at west ham we were doing like long days gym as well like that it took months from like me to physically get into it yeah and like even then like probably i'd say to my like honestly i didn't feel like properly at the level for a couple of years really at west ham yeah because i mean i had that the end of that season where like i kind of always felt a little bit off the pace because again i was getting up to speed and then the beginning of the season after like i was i kind of felt like i was getting there then i had a, it's like a knee injury um which that set me back and i was out for four months with that Fucking hell, so that's a long and then, time as well and it, like the thing with me that i always had in the back of my mind is like 
I'd already started quite late. I was 20 joining. So there's, I was 21 and I was like thinking like, I want to play men's football. Yeah. I want to get out on loan. Um, so as soon as I was fit for my knee injury, I think it was the last like, day of the window, I got um, my agent managed to sort like me to go on loan to Oldham. So um, I had that arranged and I, I still had a couple of weeks to like rehab left of my injury, but Oldham knew about it and they were yeah. all right with that. So um, I went, so obviously after that, I went to like Oldham on loan and like Paul Scholes was the guy. Yeah, the time. That's what yeah. I was going to mention that. Yeah. You were playing under Scholesy. What, what, what was he like as like a, a gaffer and like a mentor? He was really good. Like he's honestly like, I, I wish he was there longer. Um, obviously there were problems at the club. That's why he, he wasn't there as long as he was. But I think like, on the training pitch, it was unbelievable. Like he'd be in this, he'd take part of the sessions and be the best player. I was going to say, was it like, <laughs> cause you know, there's that, I remember that clip of like Zidane taking part in Real Madrid training yeah, sessions yeah. and he was just the best player there still. Was yeah. that the same with Skulls? Yeah. Like there was, there was one day that where I realized that there's levels to this game. Because, like, <laughs> we was doing boxes like where you just, just keep all basically yeah. and I was in the middle right and the ball's like gone to the gaffer and he's like that's chipped here and it's the spin like I've, he's made me think I could get there and the spins took it away from me and I thought like he's meant that yeah yeah. <laughs> it's not fluke he's actually meant it and I was thinking like, he's retired a long time ago and he's still doing things like this yeah. like it's crazy like the way he used to strike the ball yeah it was nuts when, when you go on loan to Oldham obviously you are you're contracted to West Ham is there a part of you that's like, are you still a little bit nervous about going away on loan in case you end up not going back to West Ham or you end up like, because you obviously dropped down again, yeah. are you still a little bit nervous doing this or are you more of like, I'm doing this purposely to play men's football to like build myself back up? Um, for me again, it was like, because again, I always think, like, think about a lot of things and being at West Ham, yeah, I was at West Ham, but I still not played professionally. Yeah. Like so, for me going to Oldham was I was making my professional debut. I was playing in the league for the first time, um, and that was obviously a big thing for me. Like um, again, I, I didn't play as much there as I wanted to because I got injured early doors. Yeah, um, that's when I dislocated my shoulder the first time. Start of the downward spiral of the shoulder. Yeah, so that's when um, that happened. So I didn't play as much as as I as I wanted to, but. And obviously with the manager leaving after what, about a month, it was when I came back into the team, the team were doing really well. So I could, it, it's just part of football sometimes, yeah. then you just can't get back in. Um, so obviously I played, I think I played about 10 games there. And again, I didn't really, I didn't do as well as I as I could, I, that I know that I can do. So that was again, big learning curve for me. You know, you said you didn't do as well as you know you can do. What do you measure that by? Um, I think my performances, um, my goals especially. Um, I didn't score a goal out for Oldham. Um, but again, I think for me I did have like chances. Yeah. And that's where like I think that's where I think I should have done better. Do you know what I mean? Because being a forward player you kinda know that when you've got these chances that you've got to take them because again, like we had a playoff push and, and things like that and I think I sometimes think, Oh, if I'd scored then maybe we would have made the playoffs and so and so. But yeah, I think that's the thing. I'm quite honest, like with myself all the time and with other people. If people ask me about if I've had a good game or not, I'll tell them. You know yeah. I mean? It's not an issue to me. So yeah. So before going back to West Ham, you went on loan to Mansfield, right? Yeah. So I went back to West Ham for like the next season, did pre season, and then I went on loan to Mansfield again after that. Yeah. How's that? Similar to Oldham, really. It wasn't the greatest. Yeah. Um, I think me and my agent kind of got hoodwinked a little bit basically I think Mansfield had an injury problems at the top end of the pitch but by the time I got there like a few of the lads they thought were going to be out for longer were back so then I was just there and I wasn't playing Yeah. and I was in and around it but like not getting many minutes if you go on loan you want to be playing like a week in week out don't you that's yeah. the whole reason you go on loan yeah that's the thing but it's hard because you've no manager can guarantee you playing week in week out yeah um, it's always a gamble when you go on loan because you can go start a few games and then if the manager doesn't end up liking you in that moment, then 
because it's not like they can again try it before it's, it's you're there yeah. and like if if it, you're there and they don't like you then you're stuck kind of thing so yeah that's that's for me at Mansfield that was probably like that was quite tough because like, I always felt like I had a lot to offer mm. like I did feel like I was quite fit at that time and I started I started the season off like with West Ham really well um, and there were quite a few like clubs I could have gone to on loan that year and I kind of felt like well I came to, I went to Mansfield and obviously it didn't work out. I wasn't playing as much as I felt like I should have. So that was quite tough, yeah. What what determines your game time in that situation? Is it just how well you perform in training? And then when the manager gives you a chance in an actual game, you just have to take it? Yeah, training. But I think I felt like I trained well there. Um, yeah. But again, I think a lot of times when you're a lone player, like especially if their main players are back or whatever, then if you can get pushed to the side a lot. Um, like if they've got like young lads, so like there was lads who were like similar age to me, but like had come through at Mansfield and so and so, like who they kind of saw us on the same same level thing. Yeah. So they've got a more like a more of like a interest in their own players because like, at the end of the day, if they do well, then they can sell them. Whereas if yeah. I do well, I go back to where I come yeah. from. So that's the kind of thing as well. That's the thing for. A lot of young lads, if they're going on loan, that they have to kind of think about as well, like not expect too much, but also you've got to give it a lot more because you're a loan player at the end of the day, and you your aim is to go back to your your parent club and then yeah. make an impression there. Does, does that create any tension within the squad? Um, it, again, it, it all depends on characters because some lads take it in different ways. Um, some lads just get like just like oh, it is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. The only way you can change it. So just get on with it. Other lads will have a sulk. Just that that can happen. Even if you, not even with loan players and without, it's just anyone who's in a, in the squad or not really. Yeah. But, so go back to West Ham again. Yeah. Uh, finally, you make your debut. Yeah. Against Doncaster. Yeah. FA Cup. Yeah. What happens? Yeah, that was, to be fair, it was like a day that I didn't ever think was going to come. Obviously, I'd been at West Ham almost. I'd been there three years by then. Yeah. Not really been in around the first team a lot. Trained a few times. Um, I think <coughs> the, that on well that season was the season after COVID. Um, and I remember being in the, uh, like, the 23 setup and I was supposed to go on loan and, and nothing came about in that. I remember I packed my bags to go out to Carlisle one time and obviously that didn't come about. Mm. So I just got my head down work, like, and was just working hard in the 23s and just trying to make the most of it and keeping myself fit for my next opportunity, wherever that may be kind of thing. Um, playing well for the 23s. And then um, there was an FA Cup third round game against Stockport in the, the beginning of January that I wanted to be involved in. I wasn't like in, like picked to be involved in the squad. A few of our lads were um, for that game, but I wasn't picked in that one. So after that, I kind of in my head, I was thinking like, obviously I'm not in the picture here at all. So yeah. I kind of need to get myself out and loan thing again, or or move on permanently kind of thing. Um, and I've been had I was having a good season for the twenty threes and and playing well. So I had a few options, but um, I remember just. I knew the FA Cup fourth round game was coming up, but again, because of what happened in the third round, I didn't expect to be anywhere near it. Yeah. Um, and we had a game on the Friday night before the first team had a game on the Saturday. So we played Spurs on the Friday night and um, I remember getting to the game and like, I don't know, I just felt that something weird was up and like the head of academy was like, before the game said to me like, um, I'll just like make sure like you're on it kind of thing like specifically he said yeah. something to me yeah so I was just I, I mean didn't take much notice of it just played as I normally played like played well then at half time he um come up to me and said like give it like for the next 15 minutes like just give it everything kind of thing so I did that and I remember like it was nil nil at the time and then like I see like subs on the subs bench like someone ready to come on and then my number come up and I was thinking oh, nah, hang on I'm having a good game so I've come off and then like the twenty threes manager at the time, Dimitri, who like I'm really close with, he said to me, "Oh, obviously, he said to me that I'm taking off because you're on the bench for the first team tomorrow." I was like, "What?" <laughs> he's like, "Oh shit!" Because yeah, and then I've gone like onto the sit on the subs bench, and Kevin Olin 
and the first team staff were watching the game and he's come over to me Kevin and said oh you're on the bench for the first team tomorrow like it's an 11 uh, 15 report at the stadium so I recover tonight and then like you're on the bench for us tomorrow kind of thing I'm thinking but I've just played 60 minutes <laughs> <laughs> legs gonna be absolutely yeah. shook tomorrow yeah yeah on top of the nerves and everything yeah I'm thinking yeah like gonna be nervous I remember not sleeping at all that night like I remember going home telling my mum and dad and they were like, my dad was buzzing. <laughs> I like, bet. He was so happy. This is probably like, yeah, because for them, this is probably, this is the moment you're, yeah. you've been waiting for, yeah. isn't it? Like, this is your, what you've been leading up to the in, the entirety of your life, yeah. this moment did to you, sit on the bench. Did you feel that, um, like the three years on loan and stuff that you put in and the work beforehand, you deserved the moment or what? was it a yeah, bit of like imposter kind of, syndrome? Where kind of like, like, yeah, I mean, deserved, I'm not saying, I'm not really like, I don't know if deserved is a different one because I just kind of felt like I'd worked hard and yeah. like I just was where I was kind of thing it's not I didn't really feel, I never felt like I'm entitled to like playing for West Ham yeah. or anything like that um, it was just always like something I'd hoped for one of my friends always said that I will and I was thinking like bloody hell I've got six months <laughs> left on my deal when it's going to happen kind of thing um, but yeah it was just one of those things and then I think I think for my mum and dad they they've seen how like my whole journey and how far I've gone and like like even when I was in London without a club like I'd take like two buses and trams just to go train with a team just yeah. like, just for fun like and even before that like I remember playing I used to play Saturday league when I was at uni and stuff and like carried like goalposts out and stuff on my shoulders like little things like that like yeah. how far I'd come from then to obviously now I'm on my way to be on the bench for the first team um so yeah i remember like being on going to the game and like having pre-match and like i was chatting to like obviously i know like i knew a lot of the lads anyway so i was chatting to like some of the lads who i knew and stuff um and we were yeah just just talking about the game and stuff cause that was what sort of up. names are in the squad at, for the match against Doncaster then most of the first team it was yeah. just um i think the the lads like the ones who start regularly, they were just on the bench with me. So, I mean, I was on the bench with like oh, yeah, Mick, Mick Antonio, yeah. Declan Rice, Aaron Cresswell and stuff. So they was all on the bench with me. Um, and then I know Nobes, Jan Malenko, um, Lanzini. Were they like gas for you as well, I'm guessing? Kind of, yeah. Um, like a lot, there was there was three of us, like young lads on the bench. There was another lad, Jamal Baptiste, a goalkeeper, and Nathan Trot as well. Um, they were on the bench so obviously all the three of us we kind of stuck together yeah, well. yeah. Like, we were all happy for each other like, it's the first time we've been involved in a squad um, and yeah I just thought I'd be on the bench really because I haven't played the night before didn't really think I'd get on and then we go like one nil up we go two nil up and like Dex I've, I've known Dex since we, like, we were eight and nine he was at Chelsea yeah, as well. yeah of course yeah. so Dex like in Kev Nolan's ear saying oh is Dapper going to get on this and that is Dapper going to get on <laughs> And then um, when we go three nil up, then obviously I'm warming up and like obviously that Mick at Mick would like had a like Mick had like a little bit of an injury and like he was like playing it up on the bench. Doing your oh, solid there. Oh, that's Doing, so like, cool. Oh, what a ledge. Doing, like, oh, what a ledge. Yeah, don't fight like kind of thing. So and then I remember warming up and I, I was chatting to the other young lad who was with me, Jamal Baptiste, and I remember saying to him, like, I'm so nervous. Now, he he's only young he's I think he's 18 I'm 20 I was 23 at the time he was only 18 I was saying to him like I'm so nervous because <laughs> I was like, I was at the London Stadium bear in mind it was empty though I was going to say was there a crowd in nah there? it was empty but it was still like there was cameras everywhere yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like um, it was a big game like obviously it was on TV the FA Cup so I remember being nervous and then I remember Kev like waving me down like saying oh you're coming on he said you're coming on in the ten. So like just get in the box, just try yeah. and get forward, and he said just try to grab yourself a goal kind of thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I remember like the, before the manager just said to me like obviously what my jobs were defensively and stuff like that because again like the thing about West Ham at the time the reason that they are where they are is because they're so organised yeah. and everything is done like properly and it's done by the book and like they take just as much importance in like their defending as they do in their attacking. So like going on, I knew that as well. So I knew I had to be on switched on, and I knew like I think that's always one of the things for me as an attacking player that 
I always like when I'm on the pitch, I don't want to switch off defensively because I feel like I let the team down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. So especially for the first team, I was like thinking I can't do anything wrong <laughs> here. Not a chance. Um, yeah. So I remember coming on, kind of trying to get a few touches, um, and I remember the ball broke down the right hand side, and Ryan Fredericks had it, and I know Ryan, and like, I was calling, like, I was on the edge of the box, I was screaming for a cutback. I think if you even watch the goal, you can see me like on the edge, like with my arms begging yeah. for a cutback. Then I see him take another touch and I didn't think, oh, he's just going to flash it here. So I think, oh, I'm just going to just run like, at the keeper. Yeah. And he smashed it like that to go. I had a shot and the keeper's like parried it and it's balling literally right at my foot. I was like, taps it in. No better gift. And I was eh? thinking, oh yeah. my God. <laughs> what was that feeling like? like undescribable. Uh, yeah, it was un yeah, undescribable, like unbelievable. Because obviously I think for me, like in that moment, I thought about everything that I'd worked yeah. towards kind of thing and like, that for me that was kind of the icing on the scoring on your West Ham debut in yeah. the FA Cup yeah. I mean don't get any better than that nah I don't how was that night's sleep <laughs> <laughs> probably couldn't sleep again yeah. you haven't slept like 48 yeah. hours no honestly so that was the, that was the worst part about it because so I couldn't sleep that night and then the Sunday I was in again and then training. I thought I was in for recovery having played Friday night and Saturday and then they're like nope you're training Oh, the first team. Train the first team then. Yeah, again, I was back with the first team again. And I was thinking, oh my God. And I, my legs were like killing me at this yeah. time. And I was thinking, oh, look, just got to get, like, try and get through it. Try have a good session. Yeah. Bear in mind, the lads that were training were the lads who hadn't played. So yeah, was, fresh, like, yeah Deck, fresh as daisies. Mickey and yeah. all of that. And I was thinking, oh, like, this is, this is like, it was a tough session as well. I think it was snowing. <laughs> oh my God. It oh, was, yeah, it was just tough. But I mean, I got through the session. I did well in the session and things. So. Yeah, it was good. Oh man, you know what? The love about the story is that the boys on a bench are just like backing yeah. you to try and get you on. Yeah. Literally trying to swindle the manager to just be like, oh, I'm not feeling it. Today. Yeah, so again. my legs are in. Love. That's so sick. Oh mate, that's unbelievable. Yeah. So wh what happens to the what happens for the rest of that season? Then are you, are you like dipping in and out of the first team? Are you getting more, no, more chances? So, so I remember they had a Premier League game the following week against Palace, and obviously they were they had more players back from injury and stuff. So. I wasn't involved in that. Yeah. And I was thinking like, if I stay around, I might be involved again in the FA Cup. I mean, in the next round, I might be involved in maybe in the Premier League game, but on the off chance maybe. Yeah. And uh, I I remember thinking to myself and that I was speaking to like my agent at the time and, we, and my dad and he said like, obviously we might as well use this, use that platform I've just had of score in the FA Cup and like, a lot of people hearing about it and so and so. Yeah. To go and get like, a good loan move somewhere and I remember a couple of days before the window ended um, him saying that Bolton were interested um, and spoke to the Bolton manager and he rung me and he said like yeah we want to bring you in spoke about the style of play and so and so spoke about the vision of the club obviously I know about Bolton like growing up as a kid like I remember being an Arsenal fan, that like Arsenal used to, uh, Sam Allardyce used to love being Arsenal. Well, yeah, torrid times, yeah, Bolton torrid really times, like, yeah, at the <laughs> stadium and stuff. So I knew about Bolton as a club, and at the time, obviously, what it'd been through, like they were in League Two at the time, they were like struggling. I think we were twentieth, like when I was speaking to him and stuff like that. So I was thinking, like, it's another League Two low move, but it's a bigger club. Um, like everything the manager was saying to me about where he wants to play me fitted into kind of what I wanted to do because yeah. I felt like in my previous loan moves, because it was hard because when I was younger, just my eagerness just to play football, I'd play anywhere. Mm, so yeah. I used to play up front like in non-league and stuff, but and I could get away with it at that level. But as I stepped up levels, it became harder because one, physically I wasn't a hold-up striker. Um, I've never been able to head it to save my life, to be honest. <laughs> Same. As well. <laughs> so, so like, things like that would go against me because I'd be playing, like, in League Two as an like, out-and-out striker, number nine, up yeah. against, like, galoots of centre-backs and thinking, like, like, having no chance, like, just getting, like, lumps kicked out of me and things. And that's probably why I was on loan, not scoring many goals at other clubs because I was playing out of position and so on. So, so, like he spoke to me and obviously he said I'd want to play you out wide and we play four two three one in the system and obviously like the vision of taking the club like forward um throughout like the next years and stuff. So I ended up going to Bolton uh, on deadline day la last year, last season. Um and like speaking to Bolton, knowing that 
like if things went well then it was I could make it permanent in the summer kind of thing yeah they had already had an agreement with West Ham to let like to allow me to go there for free on a permanent in the summer so just obviously basically could go there on loan see if I liked it and see how well I'd done because if I did really well then I could have had other options as well in the summer yeah. but um I remember getting there and like I remember driving to the stadium and you look at it and so you think wow like this is a big stadium it's yeah. a big big club like league, they shouldn't be in league two um and yeah I mean the season went the way it did I mean when I got there I, I don't think we didn't lose a game until about March April it's like the dream start, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, we we went from we went from twentieth, um, and we won. But the thing is, we were winning games by by the odd goal. But we were battering teams, but winning by the odd goal, we weren't scoring many goals. Um, High xG. Yeah, we 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 just had a solid defence. We yeah. had um, Alex Baptiste, and Matt Shilks, who both put Blackpool together. Ricardo Santos, who was like, flying, he is flying still. Got a team of the season. Yeah. 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 Yeah, he's got, yeah, he's got that in his ass that, that team of the season <laughs> card. Gas by that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'm still waiting for one of those. <laughs> but yeah, um, and like that was kind of what built us that our defense. And then we had Owen Doyle, who at that level he's second to none really. Like scores, he scores goals galore. Yeah. Um, Anthony Sarsovic, our captain as well. He he had a lot of injuries, but he um, was in and out. Nathan Delfonso, he was he was there. He played as well. Um, was he at Blackpool with the other two at that time? I'm not sure if he was there with them, but he might have been. But obviously, I knew Nath from when he was at Villa, like as a kid, like growing up. I used to not know about Nath with the Plats and the yeah. Plaques and <laughs> yeah, 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 baller, baller. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, we had a really good team, like a team that was like too good for League Two kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. So we kind of we went into games like, with a lot of confidence, and winning games helps. We went on this mad run. I think at one point it was us and City. Who were like that like, on the like longest unbeaten streaks in the country. Yeah. Um and then I remember like we've gone from being twentieth, like looking down towards the bottom of the table to being like just outside the playoffs. Mm -hmm. And like we were thinking like we've got a real chance of making the playoffs here. Keep winning games. I remember we lost the first game we lost was Newport away. We lost one nil and it was like Again, we had so many chances. Like, I remember one of our lads missed like two open goals. Oh, ne never let them down. <laughs> two headers. I remember it's so funny because after that, every time anyone missed a header, like everyone was just so oh. sad. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, but yeah, that's the thing that like, I think we just worked really well as a group. Um, and then we went. Like, it got towards the end of the season. Three teams go up automatically in that league, and uh, we ended up in a position where we were. With the last couple of games left, we were in the third spot, um, and that we was hoping to do it um, earlier on. We ended up we lost to Grimsby, who were bottom of the league at the time, and that that was a big shock to yeah. us as well. And then we played Morecambe, who were fourth at the time, and they were I think they were a point behind us with three games to go. So if they beat us, they would have gone above us with two games left. But if we beat them, then we could have got promoted the week after. Yeah. So I remember Morecambe, we played them away and like, obviously there was no fans at games last season and like Bolton's like a big club and like yeah. the fans, like, like I remember we used to go and play like, I remember we played Forest Green away on TV yeah. and I remember like, I remember being on the left wing, getting a ball and I can hear like people like on the golf course, <laughs> Bolton fans who were on the golf course, like who'd obviously driven down and like found a golf course, like looking over yeah. the ground to watch the game and things like that. That's so sick. Yeah, like they were mad. So like, remember Morecambe's not too far from Bolton and like the coach gets to the to the um, the um ground and like, we there's just mad. Like I remember there was a pub, right? And obviously they was all drinking in the pub all the Bolton fans and like our bus has come and I remember like, seeing geezer sprinting like, <laughs> yeah. flares the look it was mad like we was on a bus like creasing but that give you such like an energy yeah like it was it? a massive boost because like, was, like obviously it's an away game like and not like, all our fans are here like probably cheering us on I remember we won the game 1-0 it was a tent you know, it was a proper tense game like they went down to 10 men um, in the first half um, I came off at half time because I had got booked the gaffer didn't want, oh, to risk didn't want to risk it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I got booked for the silliest thing. Their their manager was time wasting. I went to get the ball back off him, and like he's pushed me away, and we both got booked for it. 
Really? Oh, it's a bit of a... Yeah, silly. And I, I was fuming because I was thinking, so my game's been like that room because of that. Yeah. But we won the game anyway. So I was buzzing because, we, yeah, off. we was buzzing because we won the game. So then we were four points clear of them with a game left. So we had over oh, two games left. So we had two games to win to get promoted. And we had Exeter at home the week after. And with extra, like they were just outside the playoffs at the time, and we were thinking, yeah, like we have to do it, get to the game. But bear in mind, I was staying at the hotel the whole time I was on loan. There's a hotel in the stadium, so oh, was, you're whole, living at a hotel. Yeah, I was living in the hotel the whole time in the stadium. So I remember, <laughs> just um, constantly in the yeah, Bolton ground. <laughs> yeah, no, constantly. I was in the boat. Yeah, I was literally <laughs> just living in the Bolton ground. Yeah, I was living in the Bolton ground. Like the, the whole of like the time I was on loan no. last season. So I remember before the Exeter game, like. Going because I always used to like go downstairs to the hotel, like kitchen, to like sort my food out and stuff. Yeah. I remember going down and there was like thinking, wow, there's so many people like here because locked. It was just opening up. So oh wait, so fans would stay in the hotel. Yeah, the fans can go and like there's a bar in the hotel, so fans could. Well, so go you were there going and down stuff. grabbing breakfast. Yeah, and just, <laughs> yeah. And the slippers and a yeah. Gown. Literally, I remember there was one time. Like, well, today. One time I was in my my pajama bottom slippers <laughs> and, that, no. and like I was going making toast and smoked salmon in the kitchen <laughs> the and fuck? taking it back up to my room. That's so funny. So yeah, I remember that day. I was a bit mental because there was like loads of people outside the ground. I could see look because. From my room, I could see the car park. And like, <laughs> curtains. Yeah, open the curtains. <laughs> and I could see like loads of police vans and things. Um, uh, and there was like like tons of people like, outside. I think there was like 3,000 fans just in the car park. Just... Wait, so you saw the transition of no fans <laughs> yeah. to fans slowly coming back whilst you were still living in the same place? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, so there was like 3,000 fans like, in the car park because obviously... They weren't they weren't allowed in at that time, so they was just out in the car park. Yeah. I remember. So like, as I was, as we were walking in, um, it was the first time because I'd never heard like a, a song for me from Bolton fans because we never had Bolton fans. Yeah, so I remember yeah. walking in, and I remember them just started singing like a song for me, and I was like buzzing. I remember voice noting my dad like, oh, they got a song for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and like it was, and they kept saying to me like, um, sign the thing, sign the thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the manager had obviously come out and said that, that they want me to stay the yeah. next season and stuff. So that was good. And I remember the Exeter game, like there was a lot of build up around it. And I think we made a mistake of kind of thinking it was almost already done. Kind of the way we, we'd been the whole season, we kind of in, went into that thinking a home game, like we hadn't lost at home since I'd been there. Yeah. Um. So we went into it and like it was 1-1, one, one. like they were a good size. So we ended up, it was 1-1. One, one. And then in the last minute, um, we like threw everything at it. And then they, they sc- ended up scoring a corner in the 96th minute. <sighs> so then we'd lost that game. And then we had to go to Crawley on the last day of oh, the yeah. season. Decent as well. And win. And like, I remember thinking like to, like, to the lads, like, if we don't win this, then that's another couple of weeks for me in the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Get me out of that hotel now. No, that's literally what I was thinking. If we don't win this, that's another couple of weeks for me in the hotel. Like, I was, like, even if we didn't win, I was still confident that we'd probably win the playoffs. Yeah. Because we were a good team and like it like you have those moments. But yeah. that for me I was thinking I can't be in this hotel like, <laughs> another couple of weeks because that's gonna be like agony. But um and like I remember the game got moved onto Sky as well. Oh man. So I was thinking, oh like everything that it's all like built up for us, so like, thinking we have to do this. And like we was all annoyed that we hadn't done it the week before. I remember the after the Exeter game, like we was all sat in the change room for like an hour of like everyone was just sat there head in hand and like proper upset and things yeah. I remember like I had to wait longer because like there were fans in the car park still who were angry and stuff because like I remember there was a video Can't go home. yeah there was a video that come out of like because we went one up in the game and all the fans were like, celebrating as if it was already promoted yeah and like I think like Fogden's dad done a video where he was like Drank a beer and oh, is that when he went oh, taste like promotion? Yeah, yeah, is that, yeah, that yeah. happened during that game? Yeah, that was the one. So they were, that he, was in the car park oh, outside the ground. When, <laughs> fucking thought when that. Got, <laughs> he jinxed it. We've got the two, the two perspectives, man. Yeah, so remember that coming out and stuff and thinking, and like there were fans and obviously. Is there not a back entrance from the ground to yeah, the, yeah, the there, hotel? Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was. <laughs> so I end up, so I end up having to go like through the ground, like through like yeah, all the tunnels, the turn, yeah, yeah, to the hotel. And that like, just get sneaked to a room. I remember that evening. Like, I remember just cur- curtains pulled. Yeah. Got into bed. Like I was like proper like upset because like, I thought that like, we'd done it, kind of thing. And obviously for me, it was been like my first like promotion, like first time winning thing yeah. in men's football. And like that's not 
like something that happens to a lot of people in their career, yeah. especially like so young for me, like still early on in my career, and especially the way the season had gone. So like I remember that, but like the Crawley game, um, we kind of had a feeling that Crawley didn't have anything to play for, so we were hoping they kind of would have been a bit off it kind of yeah. thing. And we start we just started the game really well. We thought, look, we're gonna blitz them here. Um, I remember go we went our captain like got the ball on the left. I remember I had the ball and like I, got, I must have got tackled. I got a big tackle and I was on the floor and I remember the captain picking the ball up and like me looking up and seeing him running, cut inside one, cut inside two and then smash it in and not honestly the relief and after that was like buzzing. <laughs> um and then oh, we Did went Did you get up for the celebration? Yeah, yeah. And then, <laughs> and, then and then the um what's it called? Then like the ball broke down the right hand side and our right back got the ball like in a good area and I was in the box completely unmarked and he's crossed it and then I've tapped it and scored. Oh. And that was my first goal for Bolton. I hadn't scored. I played twenty games, I hadn't scored all season for them. No way. Oh, yeah. That make, was it, last, make it count yeah. though. Make oh, yeah, it count. I remember I've had, I had a bet. You were really playing for that had, <laughs> lack of hotel, no, weren't yeah, you? <laughs> I had a I had a um I had a bet with one of the one of the young lads at Bolton because he he was like was bantering me off trying to say, Oh, you're not gonna score. I said, like, right, cool. When I score, I said if I score then you've got to let me shave your head. Um, you shave your head in the centre circle at Crawley when we, if we go up. Yeah. And he said, if you don't score, you've got to FaceTime Declan Rice for me because he, <laughs> he, loves, <laughs> he loves Declan Rice. <laughs> That's a win-win either way. Yeah. So, um, so that, that, that game that you won was the confirmation that uh, promotion to League One. Yeah. So was there like so a massive won. bottom pitch invasion at the end? Well, obviously it was at Crawley, right? Yeah. The game, so there was some Bolton fans who had driven all the way down yeah, and yeah. were outside the, the like the stadium, and I remember like we like lifted like I think we just got bottles of, I think on that day of like champagne yeah. off, off Sky and stuff like yeah. done the typical putting water over the gaffer's <laughs> head on Sky and stuff yeah. like this. one of our lads Alex Baptiste yeah it's hilarious I think um, someone had some Peronis or whatever and I remember he had a drink and he's run up to the Sky cameras gone like this. <laughs> and then run up. one of the funniest clips ever. But I, I remember like it was emotional because like for lads like him and uh, Matt Jilks as well, the goalie, um, like they were in tears because like they've been there, played their whole careers, like they've played a long time in football, and yeah. like they didn't think they'd have a moment like that again. Mm. I remember speaking to them and they said like when they signed in the summer, they signed like Jillo signed as a goalkeeper coach, and like really? yeah, he signed as a goalkeeper coach, and then. The lad they had on loan, it didn't work out for him. And then Jillo came and played a game and they did well. And then we just stuck with Jillo. Same with Baps, like Baps played, we changed shape and he was good for us. And yeah. so like they said, like they'd been promoted to the Premier League through the playoffs with Blackpool and stuff. And they said like that one was just, just as good for him yeah. because obviously it meant a lot. So I remember that was unreal. And then after the, uh, like the, after we done all the Sky TV stuff, I remember like someone opening like a gate and like we've all run out to like see the fans outside and like we're all just like singing like we are going Go on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it was unbelievable. Then we've got the coach, like, we're getting on the coach back and it was the longest, it was about a six hour journey <laughs> back to Bolton. <laughs> a good one though. Oh, yeah, it was a good one. Yeah. yeah. It's still yeah. six hours on the coach yeah, though. Yeah, six hours on the coach. It was a good one. Like, <laughs> we was all buzzing. Like everyone was, everyone was like having a good time on the bus. Um, some lads had a bit too much of a good time. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah, that's one we, way to pass a yeah, six-hour coach, you know. Yeah, we was yeah we was on the like we was on the mic as well at the front of the bus having this. Uh, people was having Do you go out that songs. night in Bolton when that happens? We got so we got back to Bolton at one o'clock in the morning, right? Oh. And that's when like we the got 50, 50 when we got to the really. when we got to the stadium. Yeah, I remember like the bus driver gets to the stadium and it, there is about 2,000, 3,000 people outside the stadium at 1am in, in the morning, the morning flares, everything going crazy and stuff. Yeah. I remember the bus driver pulls up outside the hotel <coughs> and he like opens the doors and like, I see security cars like pushing people back, like stay away. Like literally trying to, get on the bus. trying to get like people just like, trying to get near the bus and stuff. I remember um, our captain and the Owen Doyle, like, but the two at the front of the bus, and Doyle has got off the bus. And he's been picked off and just carried <laughs> into the crowd. Like people are crowd just, surfing. Yeah, yeah, he was no. crowd surfing. That's and so then cool. our skippers got off the bus, and then the police, like, there was loads of police and the police officers, like, pushed him back on the bus and they got on the bus and told our driver to drive up to the next junction, and then 
got everyone in the back of police vans, snuck us into the stadium around the back, <laughs> and then all the lads would come down out the hotel. And that we was just like partying and jumping with fans. Like, and then obviously by the time that would all happen, it was about two thirty three, um, and then we ended up just like staying in the hotel. A lot of lads, we all had rooms in the hotel, so we all stayed in the hotel. And then, yeah, went out after that. And so even day. after promotion, you are back in the hotel. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not for long, man. Yeah, yeah. Back, in, yeah, yeah. back in the hotel for a few days. But some of the lads were gone for a couple of days, yeah, after that. And then Bolton obviously make it permanent. Yeah, made it permanent. I think, I mean, I, really, I already knew that I was going to stay, but just going to League One made it, made it way easier. Yeah. Oh, bro, that's, I can't even, like, that's so sick. That's like, you know what from like playing out in Canada to getting promotion from League Two to League One. Yeah. Like you obviously never thought. Well, I'm guessing you would, you never thought that was ever going to happen. Nah, it's one of those things. Like it's just even when I joined Bolton in in like January, I never thought it would happen. Like yeah. I remember my first interview saying something like, um, I remember saying that oh, like obviously I've come here to like help this help the club go up. Like, and then I was thinking, oh. We're twentieth, yeah. <laughs> maybe, stay up. maybe not this season, yeah. but I was maybe not this season. The next one and stuff, and then we end up going on a, a mad run. I think we won something like sixteen of the last twenty-one or something. Like, that, even like the fact that you lot were twentieth when you joined, yeah, in January, yeah, and then to get promotion, yeah, is we, actually we, like we should have won the it, league as well. That's insane. We should have won the league, like easily. Like the games we dropped points in. We should have won those games, and like if we didn't drop points in those games, we would have won the league. That kind of would have been comfortable as well, which is mad to think about. But I think last quite, season that would have been was, quite tight then. That's quite a tight yeah, season. I in think terms we of came. Spread. I think we were like four points off top in the end. Really? That's, that, not, that's yeah. not much at all. Because it was Cheltenham, Cambridge, and us that went up automatically. Um, I remember. Cambridge had a similar thing to us, where like they had a couple of games where they could have done it, and they didn't. Remember they played Harrogate on the Tuesday night or something, and I think they lost like six four. It was a mad game, and like I was thinking, like obviously it is tough. Like that mm. last game, that last hurdle to get over is tough. I think for us it was good that it was in a couple of games because it could have got harder and harder. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean. But um, before we move on to, I've got a few other questions as well. We have my favourite part of the show coming up. My favourite part of the show is a quiz. A quiz. It's a five question quiz. Yeah, we now, have a leaderboard. There is a leaderboard behind you. Yeah. Uh, these are what everyone gets out of five. We've only ever had one five out of five. You might recognise one of the names on there. Uh, Hugo got yeah. two. Why is there an asterisk next to it? Because one of the questions that we asked him was very hard. Oh, okay. Now, for those people that don't know, you and Hugo work together at West Ham, right? Yeah. Yeah, Hugo's class. Yeah, yeah, he's one of the he's that he's yeah he's he's one of the good so guys. So if you in the get game. two asterisks, you are level with him. Three's better. Yeah, yeah. I reckon I'll be. <laughs> um, now, these questions they are done by our lovely producer over there, Jamie Gilbert. Um, I used to do them myself. Name on <laughs> just put his address on yeah. the as well. <laughs> oh, you know, big, big, <laughs> big Gil, we kill him. Um, now, some questions are hard. Some questions are easy. We don't know what he. I don't know what he's in the mood for this week. Yeah. But um, question number one. It's just for you. Go on. All of them. Which of these is not a real stadium? The Dripping Pan? Tony Pepperoni Arena? The w <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. The Wankdorf Stadium? <laughs> the, Mitsubu the Mitsubishi Forklift Stadium? So let me repeat. The Dripping Pan? The Tony Pepperoni Arena, Wankdorf Stadium, and Mitsubus Mitch <laughs> I can't can you say what's the Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi, yeah. Yeah. Forklift Stadium. Yeah. I actually know one of these stadiums. Yeah, the, the one that you laughed at definitely is. No, it? I know I'm not gonna tell you sounds, which one. That sounds like one of FIFA that. It literally does. The Wankdorf. Yeah. <laughs> now I know one of these for a fact is a real stadium because I've actually played in one of these yeah, stadiums. But it's, but it's which one isn't, isn't it? Yeah, I know, but but yeah, if, so I give away, if I are. give away which is the real one, then it narrows down which is not the real one. Just think how I've played in one of these so before. So it's the, what? It's the Tony Pepperoni, the Wankdorf, the Mitsubishi one. And then there's Dripping, dripping Pan as well. Dripping Pan. Dripping Pan sounds like a restaurant. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> so it's the Tony Pepperoni. <laughs> Michelin star Dripping Pan. <laughs> yeah, which of them is not a real stadium? I'm guessing you've never played in any of them. Nah, <laughs> unfortunately not. Well, I've played in one of these. I know. Um... 
thought these questions would be easier than this. Yeah, mate. Um, <laughs> Who the fuck knows what a Wankadore stadium is? guess. Because it sounds like, actually, you know, it'll be too too obvious. I think it's the uh, Mishibishi forklift one. It's not a stadium. No, it's can, can we put forward guesses as well? Yeah, yeah, put forward guesses. What are you going to go for? I'm going to guess. <laughs> I'll go Tony Pepperoni. That's what I was going to go as well. What I'll is... go a different one. I'll go Dripping Pan. I don't know. Um, well, you're wrong because Dripping Pan is Lewis's stadium. Okay. Right. Lewis FC. Obviously, I, that's yeah, where that's I'm from. Well, I, I, wanted to say, say. I wanted to say the Pepperoni. The correct already. answer is... Tony Pepperoni. Yeah. Tony Pepperoni. Oh, no. no, you said Dripping Pan. You said Mitsubishi. Well, no, because I wanted to diversify. Tony Pepperoni. I actually Tony. thought that might be a stadium. It's, yeah. it's actually called the Tony Macaroni Arena. Oh, oh wait. So there's actually a, it is a real yeah. It's the just Tony Macaroni. Where, where is it? Uh, it's Livingston FC. Oh. The Tony Macaroni. The Tony Macaroni. Arena. Haven't they got a strange mascot at Livingston? I have no idea. Macaroni cheese, Sh- probably. They, I think their Imagine mascot. I think their mascot is. Have a look. No. You can't get worse than a boiler though. Can yeah, that's so good. West Brom. Surprised you never heard of the dripping pan, mate. Well, I hadn't. No. So it's literally where I used to play all the time around the corner from college. Lewis Town. Lewis are in the. I, I thought I thought no, it was going to. You know when you said when you said oh, I've played there. I thought it was going to be way bigger than. Oh no! <laughs> than just like, like it, some it's, local. It's, it's me and me. <laughs> it's, it's pretty stunning. It's just like a bear with a hat on. Oh, oh. It's not them. It's part. Yeah. It's part of this, I think. It's a weird sunshine. Really? <laughs> weird sunshine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's funny. I don't want to know about that one. <laughs> uh, all right, question number two then. How, oh, okay, now this is hard. <clears throat> How many times have Bolton won the FA Cup? Oh, no. Wait, is that not a question for Jacob and Ollie? I don't think it was. Okay. I mm. thought it was. Oh, you've had them on as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah. They're big advocates of you, by the way. They, they love yeah. you, man. Yeah. They're good kids, then. Fucking nice. Jacob on that show. Oh, my God, it's doing my nothing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> How many times have Bolton won the FA Cup? I think it's three. I have no clue. Uh, I thought the answer was five, but I could be wrong. Jamie, the correct answer is four. Oh, oh so close. So I, close. I remember a close question. There. Bolton won the FA Cup four times. Yeah. 1923, 26, 29 and 58. Fucking they had a good 20s, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> 20s, yeah. And a random 58 year. Yeah. A bit before you signed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that Fucking hell. hell. Go, Bowen. All right, question number three. These these are interesting ones, man. Yeah. Jamie's on. Jamie had a crazy weekend making these <laughs> ones. Which of these managers has taken charge of the most clubs in the Premier League? Oh, brackets eight. Oh, eight different eight clubs times. in the Premier League. Oh, okay, makes sense. So the options are Sam Allardyce, Steve Bruce, Mark Hughes, and Harry Redknapp. That's Ooh. a tough question. Who, what Sam Allardyce? You say, yeah. Sam Allardyce, Steve Bruce, Mark Hughes, Harry Redknapp. I'm trying to think. Sam Allardyce is, but I, I can think of four who've been. Yeah, and they have to manage eight Prem clubs. Eight. See, because Sam Allardyce did spend a lot of time at like one club. Yes, yeah, he was at Bolton, West Ham, been at Everton, West Brom. Yeah. But I can't think of any others. Either. Steve Bruce. I, I I have an idea, but I don't know if it's right. Then like Harry Redknapp's what? I think, Portsmouth, I think Spurs. because Mark Hughes has been so unsuccessful at a lot of places he's been, he's probably flitted around it. Eh? I don't know. I can't think of like he's got that Bradford job and I haven't thought of I don't know many clubs. Or he's is managed. it Harry? Is it Harry? He's, been, in, he's been at a few. So it might be Big Mark Sam, Hughes. you know. Do you reckon? Might be a little sneaky one because he was a bottle manager in the past. He does do this. He does do this. He makes. Oh, you know what? Yeah. He does actually base questions think, around who I we have it on. I think Big Sam. So you're going with Big Sam. The correct Sam. answer is Sam. Yeah. Sam Allardyce. Oh, we know you too well, didn't you? Know, you're you looking at me, and I'm. I can't stop smiling. Just gonna break me. Wait. So which ones were they? Uh, he was at Bolton, Newcastle, Blackburn, mm. West Ham, Sunderland, Crystal Palace, Everton, and West Brom. Don't remember it. Palace. He's been Jeez. around. Palace. Yeah. Yeah. He was at Palace, not for long, but I do remember him at Palace. Yeah. He was at England for a bit. We well, were on the board. So there's yeah. one. One outfit yeah. so far. <laughs> Level with Ben Foster. Oh, that's all right. We take that. And yeah, the only one that. he got right was about his own YouTube channel. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, this is a true or false. Okay. And some of these are fucking crazy. <laughs> all right, true or false. Last season, so the 2021 season, there were more away wins than home wins for the first time ever in the top four English football. Yeah, I know that. That's true. There's more away wins than home wins. That's true. I, I think, remember that. I think it's, yeah, no I think crowds. It's 
I'm going to go with true because... No yeah. crowds, yeah. No crowds, yeah. Correct answer is? Yeah, it's true. It's true. <laughs> so it's, it's so weird, you know, about like this season compared to last. It's so strange having fans back and especially like, I feel like fans this year, like they're on another level because yeah. they had that year out. Making up for lost yeah. time. Like it's, that is crazy, that the difference. I feel like my game's changed so much because of In fans as well. You just get an extra buzz and like a lift. Like yesterday, like I come on at half time and like, started the game we started kind of getting ascendancy of the game I remember like we did like a really nice bit of play and like we won a corner right in front of our fans and as we're about to take it the fans like you see him like come on yeah, yeah it just yeah. gives you like an extra lift kind of thing but, and I, yeah i think but it's class like you, we've, at our ground like we've had games this year we've had like twenty thousand plus like, we played sunderland and like they brought like i think they brought five thousand with them and like that was so they had a full away end our home side was like four. That's like Premier League level. Yeah, and yeah like, packed. We end up we won six 0 that day, and it was mad. That was the that, that was the Sunderland job where the manager lost his job, wasn't yeah. it? After that result, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wait, yeah. does that also work in the other way though? That like when you go to a way ground, <clears throat> it's just like more intimidating or not? Yeah, yeah. yeah. When we played Sunderland away, <laughs> they had for like thirty odd thousand. <laughs> Big like, stadium, been more, so. might have been more than that, but but thirty thousand people against you. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was that. Does we it ever... some big grounds like Chef Wednesday away as well this year? Um, Pompey away. It's like, an old ground that is. Yeah. Does it ever work against you? You know, if you like, you were speaking about earlier when you're on a bit of a drought, like yeah. when you're in a packed out stadium, you feel a bit more pressure. Yeah, we've it's... had. Yeah, we when we went, we had a bit of a spell earlier on in the season where like we've not, we weren't playing well. Um, and like it, it does go against you because yeah. fans expect, expect, don't they? So, um, rightly so. Like they pay good money to. Yeah. I've been in that position myself. Like, I've travelled all over to watch Arsenal, and I've been in that position. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it does. It can go against you, but I think you've, you, as a player, you've just you've got to understand. Sometimes you've got to put yourself in their shoes because, especially some of the like Bolton fans have been. Like, I remember that like, it was fourteen years ago the other day that they beat Athletic Club Madrid away and, like, <laughs> That's we, and then we went to Aki, Akins and Stanley away and we lost 1-0 and like they've gone from that to yeah, yeah, that yeah. and obviously that's for them it's like a big change <coughs> it's just a momentum thing isn't yeah. it like when, when it's going good it feels electric but when it's going bad it can feel like well, the weights on yeah. at the moment the quiz is going good yeah. we're, on, we're going, on 2 out of yeah. 4 I've got 2, two and four. no asterisk so. 2 out of 4 <laughs> yeah. question number 5 is always my favourite question it's a who am I Okay. And we don't know who it is at the moment, so I like to play along as well. Right, who am I? I have played in Germany, Turkey, France, England, and Qatar. I won the African Cup of Nations in '94 whilst playing for Frankfurt. I lifted the Trophy des Champions. Oh, he's already got it. Ah, oh, shit. In '98 <laughs> with PSG. Yeah. Oh, wait, I know who it is. Yeah, I, I think we yeah. 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 yeah, look. I won the playoffs yeah. with Hull in 2008. said Frankfurt, I knew it was, yeah. I've played with Ronaldinho, Carnu, Arteta, Anelka, Nakata. And I'm one of the only players in my country on Pele's 100, great, 100 greatest living footballers. Who am I? Who do you not think it is? Well, you, you've, you've been named after him. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's Yeah. Yeah. Jamie, you got to start <laughs> up in these. Who am I, mate? <laughs> It's too bait. Oh, yeah, literally, you, when you were talking about him earlier, no, I dapo, had, dapo. yeah, I had in the quiz. <laughs> they say that he was so good, they named him twice, and you literally said it. I was like, I can't have that in there yeah. now. <laughs> Straight up. Well, uh, three out of five. Three, three actually. That's a very respectable yeah. score. Yeah, three puts you joint third. What was Spencer? What Rose? Yeah, we take that. We take that. Chris MD got three, but he doesn't really count because he was he, he hosting it at the time. Or? Where he got uh, two on the host. That's the, that's the last episode he hosted because yeah. Theo was away. But when he originally came on, it was our, he was our inaugural guest. Okay. And Theo basically spoon-fed him every... Yeah, that three possible. is basically my three. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, 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 so it doesn't really count. Uh, but before before we carry on, we've got a few more questions and we'd like to do a prediction at the end of the game for the Premier League results. Yeah. Can I quickly nip to the toilet? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Feel back. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Yeah. Feel refreshed. Um, nice little wee-wee. <laughs> yeah, it was very nice fake. Yeah, That's what I say to my dog. It's going to treat me half the time, <laughs> isn't it? Um, actually, we just mentioned it just now off camera about um, like players playing football. I said I get injured a lot. Obviously, you've mentioned like your knee injuries, your shoulder yeah. injuries. How have you like dealt with injuries coming back, working hard, and like what's your recovery like after games? 
Um, yeah, after the game's recovery is pretty good. Like we um we have like obviously most of the time we have the day off and then we have second day recovery where we go to like the gym, do bike, um, stretch, foam roll, have like recovery boots on, sometimes go to a cryo chamber. Yeah, as nice. Well. So could do with that. Oh, it's freezing in there. Oh, <laughs> I do like it though. Honestly. Yeah. Honestly, get me in a get me in a steam room or a sauna and I'm sorted. <laughs> yeah. But now nah, I think injuries is part and parcel of it. It like it happens. So sometimes you can't avoid it. But again, like there's a lot of stuff you can do to prevent it, like injury prevention work in the gym. Um but yeah, I think part of being a good pro is making sure you're available. Yeah. So I think that's something that I do try and pride myself on. So I think touch wood, I've not had uh I've not had many recently. So yeah. Do you, do you get point where like, obviously I remember you saying you're like four out injured for like four months. Is there any point in that that you're like, I, I know my head, I'll be like, they're going to forget about me. They're yeah. going to, they're going to like, I'm not, I'm not going to play again. Do you ever get those thoughts? Um, Kind of, because like, especially if you see your team doing well, um, like there's obviously I know lads who've, who've been out with like ACL injuries and like the managers changed completely because that's like a nine month full season yeah. thing. So in that whole spell, the whole thing, dynamic of the team could change you may have played like a system 4-3-3 three, three, and the new manager comes in plays 3-5-2 no wingers you yeah. see it with Chelsea so I mean, and Ben Chilwell right yeah like that's completely it, revamped the style so like there's all sorts of things that can happen but I think when you are injured you are you're so focused on like it, like injuries are weird especially long term ones because you have like little milestones and things I remember my first milestone was getting off my crutches yep. then getting then I can drive again then I can like start walking, running, et cetera. So you have these little milestones and that helps the time pass by. I think if you worry too much about on the pitch stuff and thinking oh, I'm injured, I want to be on the pitch. Well, first you need to be walking yeah. to yeah. be able to do that. So I think that helps like, having little milestones. So a lot of injured lads like work towards those milestones. I remember I had, there was something I needed to pass like a test. So like I worked really hard to make sure like I passed that muscle test so that I was at my knee was stable enough to me to go out and run again. So yeah. Um, a couple quick fire questions. Go on. Uh, only, I've only got two of them. <laughs> you can feel free to add more. Quite if you literally want. a couple. Yeah. 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 Uh, best player you've ever played against. Um, Your toughest against. opponent. What, like a defender or like a... anyone? It could be anyone. Yeah. In game, like training, whatever. Um, in training, I'd say deck. Really. Yeah. You can press him and he won't. You can't get near him really because he's so quick and the ball and that like, defensively reads the game so well. It's no, hard encourage to get him. Feels like the biggest Declan Rice fan. I could have him in a one on one, obviously. <laughs> like, there's no doubt about it. <laughs> Call nah, him he, he, nah, honestly, he's like the sky's the limit for him. Honestly, he he's one of the best players that I've I've seen like live. This is dribbling as well. Yeah. So like a CDM set in the mid, yeah. like that dribbling is a fucking joke. Like, and his confidence in the pitch and stuff and his leadership. Like he's just like, he, I think it's, help, it's helping him just add things to his game every year. Like it takes him to the next level. And, yeah. yeah. Um, who is the best player you've played with then? You could, you could throw him in probably the Probably be, Nick. yeah, probably be with Deck as well. Um, I think Jack Wilshere was very very good as well i remember the first time i trained with him was like i was like jesus christ this guy is <laughs> yeah. good yeah um the way again he uses his body <laughs> and he, he dribbles and things and you think you look at it and you think wow like y you could see why like he was so good at arsenal and things like that so. he never puts his head down i've noticed he, he when he plays football his head's always up yeah it's like how, how do you see the ball yeah like i do wonder that sometimes um do where's you think he at now He's in Denmark. <laughs> yeah, what, yeah. What's the club called? I don't know either. I'm not no, even... What's the club called? Well, I don't know, do I? I can't say it. Hmm. Do you think he? Do you think he'll find himself playing in England again, at a high level or not? Um, I'm not sure really, but obviously with with the move out of there, I think something that he wanted to try. He said it openly that he wanted to try something different. Um, I think he was like unlucky at West Ham with the way obviously he left because. He came back and he was fit and he wanted just wanted an opportunity to yeah. play in that. I think he's he's had a lot of injuries in his career, hasn't he? So yeah. it's one of those things where he was fit and he wanted wanted to play, went to Bournemouth and then yeah, ended up without a club really, didn't he? I got I got a weird... Aarhus gymnastic forening. 
big gymnasts, it's called them that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got a weird one for you. So me and Chris MD have this. <laughs> oh, we, me, me and Chris MD have this like uh, running joke, but it's not really a joke, we're actually very deadly serious about our opinions. <laughs> okay. About, we think, because we, a, a, a footballer and a YouTuber, like they both live in like dream jobs. They absolutely love it. They get to play football for a living. But our, we, we, in our minds, we're like, we've taken more free kicks than most professional footballers. Because we, all we do is take free kicks. We don't train f as a footballer, if that makes sense. Yeah. We just take free kicks, that's it. And that's why I get so many injuries because it's repetitive striking. Yeah. But um, me and Chris think that if we take, if we had 10 free kicks as a free kick challenge for a video against, say, Salah. Yeah. But Salah has to use his right foot, his weak foot, and we get to use our strong foot. Yeah. Who do you think wins that free kick challenge? I don't know, you know. Probably, I don't know. I think probably... It'd be tight. It'd be tight. It depends because, like, I mean, Salah's good on his right foot, but striking a free kick on your right foot. That's is, what I'm saying. Is, it's a dead ball it, scenario. Yeah. It's a technique. On his weak I'm foot. Just gonna ask everyone we get on here who's gonna win that challenge until you get it sorted. Yeah. Who, who's in goal though? That's the thing. Uh, get Ben. Nah, <laughs> because scoring a, scoring a goal against a professional keeper is so fucking hard. <laughs> I took me and Chris took a hundred shots against. Um, a Spurs keeper. Yeah. Um, I think I saw that. Josh Oluwayemi. Yeah, I think I've seen that. Video. Sick. Yeah. We scored like six. Really? <laughs> six. Actual six shot, Six goals in a hundred. Yeah. And it's just like, so in a free kick challenge, we'd put, you know, just one of our mates in goal. I wouldn't have a pro keeper to make it a little bit I easier. I think Salah scores against your mates. That's <laughs> oh. <laughs> but do, he, he probably scores against our mate, but does he score more than me and Chris on his weak foot? That's the question. <laughs> I don't know, you know. So you have it, to get you have to get him try to get him down for a video to see if you can make it happen. Right, Salah, if you are watching, this is about <laughs> the fourth time I've called you out for weak foot free kick challenge. <laughs> yes, yeah, keep doing it every time. Please, can we do it? Right, shall I ask a more normal question? That was a normal question. <laughs> right, okay. not a quick fire. So, well, it's not kind of a quick fire, but um, one of the discussion points was you obviously hold the number seventeen. Yeah. We wanted to potentially talk about who's the best number seventeen of all time of all time yeah. we have wait, we have got some uh, that's a very good a decent, question yeah, yeah it's a decent list we have got some people on the list right I'm just scrolling up to find someone there's on the list there's a few that I can think of off the top of my head who are, who are, who are your names original Alexis Sanchez yes yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. that was that was one of Jamie's first ones um, Kevin De Bruyne yeah currently yeah original Hazard original Hazard was who I said yeah um, Alex Song <laughs> attacking players though I'm thinking of um, Harlan, 17. Torres. Yeah. 17. Gerard was 17. Was it Gerard Chelsea? was 17 as well. Yeah. Salah was 17. Yeah, that's Sorry, why, yeah, that's why the Salah question's was a good Salah. question, mate. Yeah. Timmy Cahill, Manzukic, Petit. Penelope had 17 as well, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. Nanny. Yeah, Nanny was good, but I don't know, you know. I you know th what? I think, so... I, I I got seventeen this year because I wanted I like, asked for it um, when I signed. What made you pick seventeen? Um, when I was at Solil, that was the number I was given seventeen, and like then like I got kind of attached to it. Yeah, yeah. I was like at the time Alexis had seventeen <laughs> as well, and and Hazard had it just before yeah. as well. And I was thinking that like, I, I was a wing. I was thinking yeah, yeah. this is a bit of me. I had materials and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 you've done the you've yeah. done the stint at Chelsea at youth yeah. Arsenal fan. It's the perfect it's like the perfect. Yeah. So I thought yeah seventeen, and then obviously this season I got it again. I'm back scoring those and yeah. stuff. So I think it's it's obviously the, like my number. Like I love it. Um, but yeah. That was part of it. Like when I looked at all the others who've had 17, I thought, yeah, some big players have had 17. Who's the best, though, do you reckon? Um, for me, it's Alexis, like, when he first came to Arsenal. I remember the goal he scored at City, against City, that, like, the one he hit on a half volley. Bruce, it, he That's was thinking. so good. Yeah. yeah, he was. So good for Arsenal. It, well, the fact that we even signed him was like, yeah, was, but it didn't really make sense. But it's just Cause such I remember him at Barcelona. Like, he, remember that goal he scored against Atletico when Atletico won the league. But like, he scored in the first half to mm. go one and up. It was like a volley, like right into the near post, about top corner. I was thinking, like, this guy's mad. And he scored a chip in the El Clasico as well. And he was like, so who were your idols growing up? 
Sierra and me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Full well, house there. My manager says yeah. I've got his finish. <laughs> Oh, the, is it the, uh, the, the yeah. open yeah. finesse? Yeah. I remember, yeah. That's a very high compliment. Yeah, my manager says, yeah, he says that I've got it at finish. It was funny because my manager goes on about like, that and like everyone knows that like, in the club, everyone says that's my finish because I've scored, I think I've scored out of the 13 goals I've got all, all season, like most of them have been like come off the left and just whip it in. Oh, that's yeah. sick. Um, and like yesterday we was warming up and like doing finishing before. And I remember like getting the ball like on the left and like just like whipping one in the bottom corner. And I remember like looking like just like obviously walking back to like the start and I could see my manager like on the dugout like looking to someone going like, oh, <laughs> he's, got, he's got that one <laughs> kind of thing. And I, I saw him doing it and I was laughing like with him and stuff. But yeah, that was awesome, Thierry and me. It's like you know what you know what you know what you know when he came back and scored against Leeds in the FA oh, Cup. Yeah, yeah. The, that that was the, that was an that Alex was song prime. Yeah. That was an reason. Alex song assist. Yeah, Alex song. He yeah. had a few of them assists. Alex song. Remember Van Persie? Yes, yes mate, did. I, there was one. There was that like one season. Box. Alex song just every time Van Persie scored, it'd be a volley from Alex song chipping it over. Yeah, I, I asked this to Jamie early, but do you know why he had number seventeen? Alex song. Yeah, is it because he couldn't get number seven? Not quite. Oh, he had seventeen brothers. No way. Yeah. He's 17 brothers. Yeah, that's why he had number 17. No way. He had 10 sisters as well. He's got 27 siblings. Wow. How mental that is that? That half or? I, I would imagine so. I mean, because poor, poor, <laughs> poor woman. <laughs> poor, yeah. <laughs> 27 Poor kids. Alex Song's mum. Yeah. <laughs> oh my days. That's crazy, isn't it? And one of them played, and uh, so it's just Alex and his older brother who played footy. Yeah. Oh, we take that. Still a decent percentage. <laughs> yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. Actually, well, speaking of relatives, your cousin's Bakaya Saka. Yeah. What was that like uh, during the Euros for you? Having your own family? Or just generally, yeah, like, as you both, both yeah. coming up together. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Sick. Like, um, again, like, all I've, all I've ever known is just him as my cousin. Like, yeah. We've, we play football growing up. Like, he always says to me, like, he always used to look up to me and stuff. And I was just, I'm a couple of years older than him. Um, that must have been so weird at like yeah. family parties when you're playing football and now like fast forward yeah like I remember we used to do it in the, in uh, either at his house or my house in the garden so it used to be me and my brother and him and his brother and we'd swap so it'd be me with like his older brother against that like, Bukayo and my brother yeah. and like we used to go 2v2 in the garden like and they used to be battles like <laughs> battles <laughs> brutal <laughs> literally like I remember <laughs> at his house there was a slide and like, I remember one time, like I had the ball, and like I went that to, but next to the slide, and my brother was absolutely cleaned me into this sli <laughs> plastic slide. Oh man! Like yeah, it, they used to be brutal, but that's just how I remember yeah. growing up. Like yeah. it was just that was just normal for us. That was like, we used oh to, that used to be like just weekly for us. Like we just lose balls over the fences and stuff. Classic, like, isn't it? Yeah, just, all the time. Just. Just playing football, and then you like have that. a dodgy neighbour that you'd struggle to get it back off. And like, yeah. please, mate, man. we'd have a hole in the fence. That we'd, we, oh my god, it's terrifying. Yeah, you'd like sneak through the hole. We, yeah, that was one of them as well. We like Mission Impossible, but like, oh. and then you come back and everyone would go, yeah. The, na <laughs> the neighbour, with, the neighbour with the dogs was the worst because they oh, the worst. Oh, yeah. I wouldn't venture in them. The dogs would be barking and stuff. I, mean, I used to be terrified of dogs growing up. Yeah, was my terrified. brother, my brother was terrified of dogs. Like, I remember once he he almost like died because he there was a dog walking that like, big German Shepherd and he tried to like. Like crossed the road and there was a car coming because my oh. brother just was so oh, scared. Just, just because ran of the into dog. the road. Yeah. No way. Fuck. Proper scared of dogs. My little brother. That's crazy. Sounding like me. Do you, do you um, go to quite a lot of Arsenal games? To keep not really, not anymore. Game. Don't really get the chance to. Yeah. Like, our schedules like hectic. And yeah. Right. It's, it's, isn't it? It's more than the Prem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Way more. I've played forty games already this season. Already. Yeah. Christ. Which is that was. Looking at it yesterday, thinking that's mad. <laughs> yes, it's it's February. <laughs> yeah, forty games in February. <laughs> thinking I've, I can, I'm gonna make hopefully half a century of appearances in a season. Yeah, in one season, crazy. which is mad. I, and I said it makes sense how like some of these lads like play like in their careers and play like six hundred games because yeah. like fifty a season, like you can get to six hundred. Like, yeah, play easy. twelve seasons. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, you're there. So yeah, it, I don't really get to get to many Arsenal games. I always watch them. It's carnage in my house on Thursday night. Really? I imagine. Yeah, it's carnage. <laughs> what so, happens if Arsenal face Bolton in the FA Cup? <laughs> like, which happens every year about 15 years ago. <laughs> what happens? Bolton, in the household. Bolton win. 
That's what Got, happened. Are, are, are your parents, is your dad an Arsenal fan? Yeah, my dad's an Arsenal fan. Is he, is he, is he going to be torn though? Nah, he'll, I think he'll end up supporting me because yeah, he yeah, just wants yeah, me to do well. But like, deep down, like it'd probably be like Arsenal. He'll um, want you to win, but then you say Bolton win, he'll be like, what well on, son? Yeah. Ah, <sighs> yeah. That's the thing. I like. I, I love the FA Cup. I, I was. I wanted us to go further in the FA Cup this mm. year just to get the chance to play against that. Yeah, it's the, it's the best. Team, I, I, we used to work a lot of the FA Cup, and like, that's it, that's when I was. Uh, so when we were working with the FA Cup, I was at the Sutton Leeds game, which is then when Sutton played Arsenal the yeah. round after, and you probably love it. Yeah. Tied in the middle. That's a small world, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but like, it, it, it's. The FA just like everyone always says like the magic was lost of the FA Cup, but I do feel like over the last few years it's sort of been brought back a little bit. Yeah. Just with especially when you get like a non-league side going like far in the FA yeah, Cup. Like, like, we we got beat by Stockport this year in the FA Cup, and that was like it was like it, it was a tough game. Yeah, like, they're they're a good side and stuff, and obviously they're a non-league team and they beat us, and so for, like for them you could see how much it meant to like the fans and yeah. stuff as well. Um. I remember when I was like non league, we had Wickham in the FA Cup first round, and like I remember that that was sick because we played against Sack and Fenra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember getting his shirt as well. Oh, oh yeah. you you got his shirt? Yeah, I got yeah. his shirt. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah, I bet, I bet. <laughs> yeah, it's huge. Yeah. So yeah, I got I've got his shirt. So um, yeah, that was good. But yeah, I loved the FA Cup. I scored for West Ham in my debut in the yeah. FA Cup as well. So hopefully one day win it. Never yeah. know. Yeah. Uh, right, game week twenty eight. Yeah, yeah. In the Prem. We do Prem predictions. Um, we don't take score lines. We just take who's going to win. But if you want to yeah. throw in... <laughs> Usually, but then like halfway through, someone will go, oh, I think that's 2-0. And, and actually, <laughs> I will quickly mention, we do have some sad news. Um, obviously, we are waiting for a postponed game between Burnley and Spurs to go ahead for me to get 10 out of 10 on predictions. I've been on 9 out of 9 for about 2 months. 9 out of 10 for about 3 months waiting for Spurn Spurnley. Burnley versus Spurs, uh, and to get ten out of ten, I needed Spurs to beat Burnley. Yeah. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. What did happen? Ben Mee uh, called a little Ben Mee header. He goes, you know what's going to happen? Burnley going to win one 0 and Ben Ben Mee's going to score a header. <laughs> Fucking bastard! You spoke it into existence. We're like the it? Messi and Ronaldo of predictions. Oh, I can't believe just it. Just completely intertwined. Why? Why does that happen? <laughs> so yeah, the ten out of ten is still looming. Could this week be the week? All right, we got the early kickoff. Leicester at home to Leeds. It's we a double take... game week as well, Ooh. isn't it? It is. Leicester. I Leicester. Think Leeds are a, a shit. Tough time at the minute. They're yeah, a not... new manager. Well, we'll we don't know it. who yet. Be... Isn't it Jesse March? Oh, was... really? I don't know. I've... That's what I thought. Bielsa's. Is... I know Bielsa's gone. By a yeah. Mutual yeah. agreement. I'm pretty sure Jesse March is going to be the really? new man. I'm... I don't know. Maybe a new manager bounce. New manager always bounce. Happens, yeah. But... I mean, Leicester, I think Leicester are a good side. Good club then, Leicester. Yeah, I'm going with a Leicester home win. Leeds are missing their entire spine of their team. And Conrad Logan. Yeah, that's another one. <laughs> oh, is he at Leicester? Well, it used to be. It used to be, yeah. I was going <laughs> to yeah. say, my mate Conrad will never get tagged in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll go Leicester home win, Leicester home win. I'll go Leicester home win. Yeah. You always do say never back the early kickoff, though. <laughs> uh, that is a saying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You're backing Still. it this time. Well, what are, what are they expected to win? Yeah, I don't of know. course Leicester expected to beat yeah. Leeds. Okay, yeah. right. Well, yeah, fine. Leicester. All right. Villa at home to Southampton. That's going to be a good game. Southampton, they're both in playing very well. Yeah. It's tough, yeah. Southampton are playing some good stuff. And are Villa, we... obviously, got some good players in the window, didn't they? Yeah. At home, uh, Villa. Villa? Yeah. Yeah, Villa Park is... Oh, I'm going to go over draw. All right. I think that's fair. I, I, I think Southampton are good. playing very well. Yeah, I'll go Villa. Ward Prowse to score a free kick. Yeah, you're bringing him in. <laughs> I almost brought him in this week on a free hit, but uh, yeah, well, I might bring him in. I'm probably not going <laughs> to. I'm getting rid of the old gold Yalta. Oh, okay. Um, Burnley are at home at Chelsea. You got. I think Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah. Burnley are doing all right though. They are. I, just, I like that new striker they got. Oh, King Wakehorst. Yeah, <laughs> he is my king. He, uh, I, I do like him. He's a cult hero in, in FIFA for me. Is he? And then we and then Burnley signed. I said we signed him. <laughs> Burnley signed him, and he's just hit the ground running. Got him yeah. captain for the double game week this week. Really? Yeah. Chelsea, I think. I'm going with. So, uh, but I've got to do double game week as well. Oh, that's there's just more. Yeah, that's... there's more fixtures. Yeah, I'm going Chelsea. Yeah, I'm going Chelsea. 
As much oh. as I love to back wear class, <laughs> I'm going to go yeah. Chelsea. Uh, Newcastle are at home to Brighton. It's a long way for Brighton to travel. Brighton are good. Two. Very good. I'm going two. I'm Brighton. going draw. Brighton have just draw? lost 3 0, 2 0, mate. Yeah, but Brighton are a good team. They, they are, are a good team, but Newcastle are flying at the moment, man. You know, Bruno has, like, Bruno Guimaraes. Hmm. Has not even played a game for him yet. Yeah, and they're just winning. Yeah. So draw, Newcastle. Yes. I should back Brighton, really, shouldn't I? But I'm going to go Newcastle. All right. I'm going to go Newcastle. Uh, yeah, just because they're playing well. Norwich are at home to Brentford. That's a big game down there, isn't it? It is. That's huge. Battle survival, that is. Um, I don't know. Norwich, the thing about them, they lack goals, don't they? They just can't score. Yeah. I reckon they'll beat Brentford though. Yeah. Uh, th- actually, th- Ericsson th- might be playing. Should be, shouldn't he? Well, he came off the bench, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. Matt, actually, I'm going to go Brentford there. Brentford away win? Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go Norwich. I'm going to go Brentford away win. Um, You spoke earlier about Peterborough. Were you there when Tony was there? Nah. No, I just didn't nah. intercept the same. Nah, he'd left by then. It was a uh, striker there was Jack Marriott at the time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it came up in my head at the time, but I didn't <laughs> want to cut him off in conversation. So, <laughs> Brentford, Brentford, Norwich. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They could get sucked in, you know. Brentford on. I know. Yeah, that's what you said. Yeah. Uh, Wolves are at home to Crystal Palace. Wolves. They got that that new Hazard Pedence. Mate, they? Pedence is so. I'm glad you said that. Yeah. I've been I've been wanting to tweet this for ages. Yeah. Pedence is a fucking baller. He's so good. Yeah. He's been, he's been doing no, that for he, years. No, yeah. No, but he has. I, yeah, I remember. He had, like, I remember he did it against Spurs in the Champions yeah, League for, you, for Olympiacos. People, he's getting the recognition now. Well, not yeah. what you mean. You've started watching him actually. No, because there's it. clips <laughs> of him where he looks just like Hazard, yeah, and, yeah. He's, and he's got the trim as well. So, and the physique so. he's so yeah. good I'm going to get him in the team I'm going to bring him in FPL it's only 5.5 I know I'm going to bring him in because he keeps getting goals and assists uh, yeah so you're going Wolves Wolves yeah you're going Wolves I'm going Wolves Wolves all round Ooh. Liverpool huge game at home to West Ham big game this at West home. Ham want top four Liverpool are so close to catching City Liverpool at home now. well they will won't they mathematically it's just what? Man City play after them. Well, I guess so, yeah. Yeah, if, if they, they beat West Ham. Yeah. I think now, is it, Liverpool didn't play this weekend, did they? So I think oh, no, they didn't. Points, no, yeah, they? so it's six again. Oh, yeah, yeah you're absolutely right. It is right. six. They yeah. got that the game final, yeah. Um, Liverpool, West Ham. Liverpool lost less games than Man City. Yeah, I know. I saw that the other day. Um, Liverpool, West Ham. I'm, I think I'm going to go draw. Really? Draw? It wasn't far off that last time, was it? It's no. 3-2. And you're going... Yeah. Drive Bowen's Lewis, on Lewis fire. Lewis Diaz brace. Man, I've not got him in my FL team and I'm, I'm slacking. Bowen's on fire. I need to bring him in. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go Liverpool. Just, I think. You know what? So draw Liverpool. I'm going West Ham win. I knew that was coming. Go <laughs> Decker's going to bag the winner. Oh, go on. Right. Watford at home to Arsenal. 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 Come on. All day. This time Ben Foster will not be saving a penalty from Aubameyang. Uh, I'm going well, Arsenal. Yeah, well, Aubameyang who? Yeah, no. I'm going, I'm, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm, going, I'm going Arsenal as well. Arsenal will round oh. the Manchester Derby at the City ground. No, no way near as City. hyped as it usually should be. 100% City. It? Yeah. Just has to be. City 5-0. <laughs> Do you think? That's, I think it'll be 3. That's a I think 3-0. Three, three. But this is what I mean. We said we weren't going to do scores and then you just said the score. Every, every result we do, City 5-0. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so City, City, City. Yeah. Spurs are at home to Everton. Draw. Big Frank goes to goes to Tottenham and wins. Yeah, I think that would be a huge result. Yeah, they need they, as well. They need points. They're a point and above. And he's fuming does, already. Yeah. Frank's Frank's on the war path, mate. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so I, saw, I, saw, yeah. I saw his post match. Yeah. Uh, so you're going Cole's with him as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I, you know what I love Ashley Cole. Yeah. I know he did Arsenal. How dirty. mad is that that they're at Everton, though? Yeah. <laughs> just that's Ashley and Frank at Everton. I think Ashley's such a good coach. Yeah. He, he struggles on TV to uh, articulate articulate himself, but I think he, if you have him as a coach, you're just you're dreaming. You're in dreamland. Yeah. Um, so you're going Everton. Everton. You're going Everton. I'm going to go Spurs because I'm bringing in Harry Kane. I need him to score. Um, but I don't that's know. Not how the I base my predictions on what I need in a field. <laughs> Uh, Wolves at home to Watford their first double game week yeah Wolves I think Wolves again yeah. Wolves not, not really back in Watford for much in this I'm one, not really going to yeah I know they got yeah 
Ben Foster double game with bring him in. It's funny because I watched uh, Ben Foster's videos with uh, my missus at home and like with Watford player and he concedes. She's like, oh, I feel so. <laughs> <laughs> it's a shame um, that he's not been allowed to like have the GoPro situation in the Prem, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. rights and all that yes. bullshit. Uh, so Wolves, Wolves, Wolves. Southampton at home to Newcastle. Definitely Southampton. They're so good at home this year. You know their their record at home is only bested by. Liverpool and City. Wow. That's mental, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, good. Yeah, Southampton. Southampton? St. Mary's is tough this year. So, yeah. Especially with James Wolfe scoring a free kick every week. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you going with then? Southampton? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to go with a draw. Okay. Uh, Leeds. Technically, that's still unbeaten, isn't it? So, yep. I mean, yeah. Leeds, the final game. Leeds on Amazon Prime at home to Aston Villa. Villa. I know the yeah. thing about Leeds is Island Road. Yeah, like they've been this, they've been on a bad run, like yeah. where they've looked like second best a lot of the time. Yeah. So, like I don't know what the new manager's. That's what do. I mean. That's like I, I don't. Gonna... I, at this point, I literally don't know what Leeds is going to turn up because the one that we're used to is like all out attack. Mm. You know, fully send it, see what happens. This one, it might be. Yeah. Completely different. Could thing. just sit back and yeah. Just I'm going to go draw. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah draw's fair. It was a draw last time, right? 3-3. Three, three. What, what do you mean? I don't remember that game. <laughs> it's when Coutinho... Oh, was that? Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, I'm going to go with Villa to win and Coutinho to score a free kick. Shock, you've got him. Let me guess. No, but I'm going to bring him in. <laughs> 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 yeah. And who you're going for? Villa, Villa. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> right, that is all the predictions. Yeah, um, shall we wrap it up? Do you want to wrap it yeah, up? Yeah, go and wrap it up. You wrap yeah, it up. Yeah, so um, we we have like an FPL league. Yeah. And the winner of that league at the end of the season will be able to win this shirt. And this shirt is signed by basically all the guests that we've had on. So yeah. would you do us the massive honour of Of course. Which the shirt? real estate are you get in? Where are you going you, mu- you must have like a proper football uh, autograph as well. So this is actually... Yeah, something like that. <laughs> where are we going for? He does. That and is, his number. That is 17. professional. That is professional. There we go. Mate, thank you so much for coming on. It's, it's been right. an absolute pleasure. Mate, there's that levels in been... that compared to so many others of these. We just put like Theo. <laughs> no, I normally I put 14, but yeah. I'm currently I'm currently in between no, but clubs. Look, look at Aaron. He's... Oh, mate, I'm, move to, uh, I'm in between he's got clubs. A smiley face. I don't know. Who's we don't know. <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> my, my guess is it's probably Ollie. Oh, it could be Ollie Ball. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Ollie Ball, yeah, that sounds like him. Right. Um, yeah, that was amazing, mate. Thank you so much for telling oh, us no, about your been, journey honestly, and your story. It's been a pleasure. Um, good luck with the rest of the season. Thank you. Uh, what are the ambitions? Well, for us, it's to hopefully sneak into the playoffs. Back to back. Yeah, make it back to back for the gaffer. It'll be back to back yeah. to back as well. So. <laughs> for the people that stand outside Bolton Hotel. <laughs> yeah. At the end of the year. Yeah, no. Nah, so hopefully that's, that's our ambition, obviously, to hopefully sneak in, in there. What about um, personal ones? Do you have a target? Yeah, just, just score as many. See if I can get to 20. I've got 13 in all comps. Get to 20 goals for, and get 10 assists as well. So hopefully, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That'll give me a good all-rounded season, I think. So yeah, hopefully that's what I can All the to. best, mate. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Awesome. Taking people, your time. People watching, don't forget to uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts Spotify. and Spotify. Give us a five stars on Spotify. Make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube. And a request from Jamie uh, before we start the show. Please go over and follow us on TikTok because we're about to, well, we're on the road to 100K. And it would really mean a lot to Jamie who puts countless hours into it. So. There you go. All right. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. <laughs>